Want to participate in a Don and Mike show contest? How about this? You or a member of your household can only win once for 60 days. You must comply with any age limitations for each contest. For complete contest rules, send a self-addressed stamp envelope to the mighty WJFK, PO Box 3649, Washington, D.C., 2007. Thank you, and God bless. Don and Mike, there'll be no Molly Conlon. Will you see if your mom can give my resume to Dennis Phillips? Because if I can get in a Broadway show, then I would have done it all. Film, television, and theater. The only thing left would be radio. That's just for ugly people. This episode deals with the inappropriateness of racial invectives and contains coarse racial slurs. Your discretion is advised. Hey, everybody loves Donna Mike. Hey, kids, could I talk to you for about 30 seconds? Uh, this is Elvis Presley. I ask you to listen. Now, here's a song. I would like to talk to Christine about this, but she's got a second. Oh, Kerner! The lovely Christine Kerner would approach the microphone, please. Christine! I know that this is a very strenuous week for Christine, that she has all of her finals. Crazy time for uh, most uh, colleges across the country. Coming up this week. <laughs> and I say, hi, come on in. A lot of pressure. I didn't realize what <laughs> Pressure cooker week. Hi, Christine. Hi. I, I want to talk about all kinds of... Serious stuff. I just want to know about the paper you're doing about WJFK, about how inept this radio station is. <laughs> no, it's not on that at all. It's not. We have to do like a 25-page case study of, uh, on of an your, organization your that one of us is involved in. Mm -hmm. And we decide, well, they decide that we should do WJFK. So. Ah. And the last I had heard, Christine was going to do a paper about how mismanaged this radio station is. Well, I, I applaud her for that. I think that's a marvelous uh, task. I think that's great. <laughs> if, you, if you're do are you doing some uh, real analysis of the way things work around here? Um, not really. <laughs> We're kind of putting this together in three days, though. So. Three days. So it's, so it's a rush on, job. Yeah, it's due on Thursday. We're supposed to be doing this for a while. So. You know, if you want to see her guaranteed A, ask some of her sources, some of the people she's interviewed here. Oh, That's like you, true. Rob? No, not me. I declined. I demurred. <laughs> who, have, who have you interviewed? And now, is, the, I, is yeah. the paper about how badly things are run here? No, it, honestly, we had to find something that we'd like, that we can find a problem, which we chose Saturday programming. Oh. Hey! That's very good. <laughs> Rob, whoa! Very good. So it is kind of about how bad the station is. Just on Saturday. Just on Saturday. <laughs> just so, uh, who granted you an interview for this paper? It, so far, just Jeremy. I thought to get Jimmy and the cup. I knew that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> They're going to get an F if you had to interview Jeremy Colvin. I still need about three more people, though. And uh, well, Jimmy, uh, he's a great source, of course. If you can <laughs> decipher the now, are you, when you interviewed Jeremy, did you come to it as? Did you come to him from the perspective of listen? The station really sucks on the weekends, or did you come to him and say, you do such a great job promoting and, and programming on the weekends? As I just came up to him, I said, I need a paper by Thursday. I need some help on it. <laughs> so you, you went with the, I'm a college student yeah, in I'm need of that. help. Mm. Yeah. Instead of like starting the interview with, hey, bud, what's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> now, the focus of the final paper, will it be positive or negative towards the weekend program, the Saturday programming on the station? I'd like it to be positive. I'd I like it to be positive. positive strategies to improve it. So. Oh, you have? Yeah, we have to do 25 oh. pages. We've got to break up, break up a lot of ideas. You know, you are not, <laughs> it's so funny because you, 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 you can care what the paper is. It's just the 20. You want to knock out the words yeah, and get it done, right? 25 pages. Are you allowed to double space it? <laughs> yes. Make it like Michael Jackson. I'll be book. putting pictures in the 25 minutes. <laughs> You'll be putting pictures in. What are you going to put pictures in of? Of like the whole like station, publicity. Uh, we're doing anything that we can film. <laughs> oh, my God. 25. Like one page, one line of text and the rest, 24 pages of pictures. That's our strategy so far, yes. <laughs> and what class is this for, Christine? Organizational communication. <laughs> and I like the way you say organization. You say it in a Canadian way, which is kind of cool. Organizational. You sound like a hockey player when you say okay. that. You know? That's a great organization. <laughs> We stay great in their building. That's right. I'm just hoping this doesn't get back to my professor right now. <laughs> professor backwards. <laughs> oh, professor from Gilligan's Island. Uh, <laughs> professor Irwin Corey. Hello, Christine. It's time to read your paper. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, I see solutions for the Saturday dilemma at WJFK. <laughs> and I thank you, but lovely pictures. I think that technically this would count as an interview with me and Mike about your paper. That you That's could probably true. waste at least a page few sources I have. of double spaced yeah. words talking about us talking to you about this. You know, I know if you interviewed one individual, you'd get about probably 50 pages if you wanted to ask a certain individual about the uh, weekend programming. Here. That. You're looking at him right over there.
<laughs> Dom would do. I mean, you could quote him. Just get the tapes of the show where he talks about the weekend programming that here. sucks, Christine. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's an embarrassment. <laughs> you can quote me on that. I think the weekend programming on the station is an embarrassment. I think it's great. You get balanced by talking to Jeremy, then you talk to Don, and mm -hmm. then you get Tim McWilliams. I'll get Tim. He's the big instigator. That's right. He's a, big, he's a good guy to interview for that. Quote me on this. They whore this station out. Mm -hmm. Whore it out. That's right. Okay. Have you heard that ridiculous car show they have on the weekend? <laughs> where they got the, the, the sw swarmy car dealer? I've never listened to it. I've heard the promo. <laughs> who happens to sell Isuzu's? <laughs> and if someone calls up with a question about a car, they go, hey, uh, yeah, I got a question. I got an 83 Chevy. You know what his answer always is? <laughs> Buy an Isuzu. Get an Isuzu. We got a lovely deal going on right now, and we can help you with that, Isuzu. It's fantastic. And Tim McWilliams, thanks for the time. You got the, you got the car show. You got a, a real bad gardening show that they have on this station now. Don't and you I have that, that, that for love and money, yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. I, oh, I love that show. <laughs> I listen to that. I'm riveted by that show. This station, they forsake the, getting an audience on the weekend mm -hmm. because all these uh, clients will pay money for an hour of airtime. Right. Yeah. That's like, that's backwards, Christine. You quote me on that. That's bass backwards. They're making some changes, though, implementing some new programs that I think are going to be great. Good. Yes, I heard. You, that's what you, Jeremy says. Where do you hear the debut of Cook for Me with Michael O'Mara? <laughs> let me tell you. It's a winner. It's a winner. It's a 15 minute show. I'll have to incorporate that. As there you go. Program. Good idea. Quote me on that. I'm serious. I've been in the radio business 25 years. The programming of this station on the weekend blows. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that in track quotes. I could program this station in my sleep. I swear to God I could. Thank First you. thing I do is take off all that crap, all that junk, car dealers. <laughs> People hate car dealers. Why would you want to listen to one on the radio? And reimburse the station for $40,000. Right well, Mike, theoretically, you would make the money back by With putting advertising, on yes. quality programming that would go Garner the top advertising dollar. That's right. Well, Don, can I ask you this? Yes, ask what away. Would, what would you do on Saturday programming? Yeah. Well, first, let me ask you something. Uh -huh. Do you have your navel pierced? <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I would devote probably most of Saturday to talking about that, Christine. There you go. It's okay, I'll have to add that in. Piercings with Christine Kerner. <laughs> now, you want to know what I really do? I would probably do a variation of the programming the station is doing now. Okay. That I would I would nurture some kind of uh, yeah hot talk format on the weekend. Use a farm system. Use it as the farm team. Yeah, right. Just like with the junkies. The junkies used to be on the weekend. That's right. Then their show got good enough. Now they're on every day of the week, mm -hmm. and they're doing great. They get a money you, metal show. You know what that takes? That takes some initiative. That means the, sta that may, I mean, the people that are at the station would have to go out, find some people they think they have talent, mm -hmm. and then actually have to take maybe 10 minutes to sit down with them and say, mm -hmm. do this and do this. But Jeremy's too busy on the weekend going to antique shows or whatever he does. Page 30. You see, I told you you could get all these pages if mm -hmm. you listen to him. Yeah. Thanks a lot. This is making my day for right now. <laughs> all right, get out of here. Right. Station blows on the weekend. You quote me on that. It blows. Blows dead bear. <laughs> Jeremy Coleman couldn't program his way out of a paper bag. I've given you an A minus, Christine. The minus, uh, what is this? Blows dead bear. Happy camper. He doesn't like when I exercise my prerogative to no, talk weird. about the weekend programming. Free country. A little frustrating. Free country there, Tim. And uh, happy holidays to you and yours. <laughs> I got no problem with Tim McWilliams. He's a capitalist. He's, he's doing, hey, he is doing what he gets paid to do. Mm -hmm. That's He is doing his job. He's trying to make money. Right. I just think it's very embarrassing to work at a station that on the weekend virtually gives up. <laughs> this station, this radio station is the equivalent of Channel 50. <laughs> okay? <laughs> on the weekend. Yeah, you know what Channel 50, except Channel 50 is that way every day of the week. Right. We're Channel 50 on the weekend. <laughs> White flag. Flags are up. <laughs> We give up. <laughs> yeah, we got no chance of anybody watching us. So we're going to run this infomercial for George Foreman's fat free hamburgers <laughs> every hour of the day. Love those infomercials. <laughs> Channel 50. Uh, Channel 50, at least, uh, you know, if you're looking for that kind of entertainment, you know where to go. Infomercials. I heard something about CBS that I probably shouldn't say. Well, go ahead, say it anyway, because usually when you say that, you're going to say it just the same. You heard a rumor? Mike, I don't believe in rumors because they're all junk. Right. Mm -hmm. But I did hear. No, no, all the salespeople are walking by giving me the evil eye right now. The evil eye! I heard that CBS today moved to uh, boost revenues. Yes. In many markets, they are bumping entertainment tonight to run infomercials instead from 7.30 till 8 p.m. Brilliant. Genius. There you go.
Okay. You can be sure if it's Westinghouse. Who needs more Bob Goins when you can, uh, you know, see that fat guy with a sweater <laughs> selling uh, car stuff? You know, the, the stuff that you can light the, the hood of the car on fire in it. And it doesn't leave a mark. I don't know if that's a prudent move. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to question that since I don't know dick about television. I just know about radio. That's right. But you never know. And if it, if it happens, then uh, people can probably let us know. Christine, I would I would be interested to know, though, what your final paper looks like. Mm -hmm. And I'd be more interested to know what grade Professor Marsky gives you on it. Well, uh, I, uh, how you doing? That's a nice paper there, Christine. A minus. All right, fantastic. i got to go back to Atlanta. Hello, Dynamite Show. Hi. Hi. Can I to Dynamite Club, yeah. please? Yes, you're on the air real quick right now. Hello. Oh, great. Hey, I just want to stick up for Reno. If you guys switch uh, networks, you got to do something about keeping Reno. We love you here. Listen, when we do switch networks... Yeah. All of the decisions about our show will be made by the individual stations that currently run our show. That's right. Meaning we're very happy with KPOI and Reno. We don't have a problem with them. They run the whole show. Well, except for in the summertime, they two-thirds of the days they're cutting out for baseball, which is great, but we miss you guys. We've got to get to an All right, well, this is, thing. this is exactly why we got to renegotiate a deal mm -hmm. with all the stations that broadcast our show. And, if we, you know, we'd have to say to KPOI, and this is the point of why we want to do this, yeah. go to them and say, listen, we don't want to be preempted for the goddamn San Francisco Giants or whatever yeah, they yeah, call them. You know, we're not talking about etched in stone stuff. There's, you know, you can compromise and negotiate around anything. And uh, we like KPOY. They've supported us. And they're the type of station that we'd right. love to stay on. We really they're, would. They're great. Yeah. And they, they, however, they're sure, but we just got to get you every day. Yeah. However, we, would, we will say to them and to any other stations that have play-by-play -play rights, if you're going to have a baseball team on that plays 162 games... Right. You know, yeah. We are not the show for your station. Mm -hmm. You know, we've made that mistake before. Right. We're not going to make that sure mistake. When you guys do it yourself, do it right and make sure you get a station here because somebody's going to want you. Make sure you get it. If they don't want All you, right. for the All right. Well, thank you. Well, you. Listen, you should be on our management team. That's exactly what we're planning. You've got hey, that enthusiasm. Sign me up. Thank you, sir. Thanks, guys. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> I give that call a B-plus, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hello. How are you guys? Hey, great, thanks. Good. You having a good day? Yeah. All right, good. Hey, uh, How about Christine, you? Are you having a good day? <laughs> What's that? Are you having a good day? I'm having a pretty good day. I'm working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going okay? Yeah. We're going okay for you today? It's going rather well, yes. Good. Good, good, good. I will give the beginning good. of this call a C-. minus. <laughs> I'm just in a kind of a grading mode now. I was thinking about Christine's paper. Okay, you can yeah. continue. Then I'll give you I'm... your final grade. There you go. I was actually calling about Christine. Mm -hmm. Where are you now? I'm in California. We're here in uh, Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. I'm proud to give you an F, and that doesn't stand for failing. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I thought it was going to stand for faggot. Yeah, I'm glad you got clipped there. You have a problem with your cell phone. Yeah, okay. Well, listen, I had a question about Christine. What about her? Does she really have a pierced navel? Yes, I believe so. Yes, yes. I would be willing to wager that she's probably engaged in three-way love. I would be willing to do something that I don't even want to think about you doing. You behave yourself and just pay attention to your job. Hello, Don and Mike Show. <laughs> what do you give the final grade of that call, Don? F, Mike. F, there it is. F. <laughs> As in F word. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey, Don and Mike. Uh, this is Greg from Alexandria. Yes, hi, Greg. Hey, I wanted to throw in a little color about your Saturday programming. Oh, and listen, it stinks. The programming on the weekend station on the weekend stinks. Well, get a load of this. I was up early enough to listen to that stuff, and I'm driving on the road that a Suzu dealership was saying if you come in, if you're the first guy in to buy this. Okay, hold on. Yeah, you know yeah, Tim is going to. Yeah, yeah. i got to stop you there. It's yeah. one thing if I give my opinion on the programming, but we can't have everybody else calling in now no, and saying. No, you, know, you know, really. But wait not. a minute. You know, it's, it's in place. It's, you know, he's doing what he has to do as a sales guy. He's making a living. I just wish that the programming types up on the third floor. You wish that we'd have some, uh, you know, make it really, uh, you know, the, the same kind of thing we do during the week. Yeah, make it a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week radio station. That's right. Right now, the way the station is, it's a Monday through Friday station. Mm -hmm. On the weekends, white flag time, baby. Yeah, it's kind of an infomercial thing on the weekends. Hello, Donna Mike. Hi, Sean. There goes another sales guy who walked by giving me a real dirty look. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Donna Mike. Hello. That's Tim McWilliams who's just calling and looking at the phone right now, just going. <laughs> oh boy. 
Well, yeah, he's pissed. Mm-hmm. He's pissed. And his hair is a different color today also. Really? Yeah, it's more uh, purple. Reddish brown. No, it's, it's like an auburn almost today. I'm uh, you know, I'm banking on him going that, that whole purple route one day, you know. <laughs> hey, it's punk rock and Tim. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Don and Mike. Yeah, buddy. Hey, Mike, could you describe in great detail for me how your feet are today? Uh, in great detail, I had an itch <laughs> on the top of my foot, and I dug about a quarter size hole in the top of my foot. <laughs> So they are not really money right now. <laughs> you should get something good for that money, like Elvis so. did. I hope so when I go to the doctor with Dr. Nick. I love Don and Mike show. Yeah, hey. Hey, turn your radio down, please. Sorry, is that what's doing it? Yeah. Um, listen, I thought I'd uh, call and see if I could talk to Don and Mike about uh, Christine's body piercings. You're talking with us now, and what about Christine's body piercings? Holy cow, I just wanted to weigh in and say I'd, I'd listen to a four-hour show about her body piercings. There you go. I'm sure you All are. right, and I think that a lot of people would. Hello, Donna Mike. Hi, can I talk to Donna Mike? Oh. Man, oh, man. Hello. <laughs> can I talk to Donna Mike? Duh. Hello, Donna Mike show. Hi, David Morrow. Hey, how are you? Mike's David Morrow on the phone. How are you, David Morrow? Good. Buzz, did you know that David Morrow was calling? David Morrow is calling? David Morrow. Remember David Morrow? Oh, great. Thank you. I'm waiting for that bone Morrow transplant myself. <laughs> <laughs> I was in New York for Thanksgiving. Edward R. Morrow. Ah, uh, boy. I was in New York over uh, Thanksgiving, and you are right, Only Morrow I know, I think. Dale. That's Morrow. No, That's not even Morrow. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, Robbie? Rob Morrow from Northern Exposure. To Morrow. The sun will come out. There you go. Tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. I was in New York over Thanksgiving, and they are running infomercials in place of uh, entertainment tonight to confirm your rumor. On Channel 2? Uh, yeah. Yep, WCBS. Mm-hmm. Yep, so they're really hurting for money. Just want to let you know. Well, they paid a lot for the NFL, sir. That's right. <laughs> Thanks very much. Motto here, any way possible. Hello, Don of Mike Show. Get it done. The motto here, seriously, is what do we have to do to make this happen? <laughs> <laughs> what do we have to do to get you to walk out the door today and put you in the front seat of this beautiful Azuzu? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Bad credit? No problem. What do I have to tell you to get this deal done? <laughs> Listen, I'm going to talk to my manager. <laughs> well, he's never done this before. But I'm going to be able to give you... <laughs> I don't want the undercoating. You lied to me. I'm going to be able to give it to you for $400. Oh, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> What's your fee? What's your fee? King of Queens did a pretty good job with the car dealership mm-hmm. last night. I thought that was, you know, it was reasonably accurate. You know, when they when they ha- when they have a hot-selling car yeah, and they when completely blow you off. Kevin James wants to dicker with a guy, and the guy <laughs> just said, hey, listen. <laughs> Dying it's you outside. <laughs> Sticker price is sticker price. That's right. And then he goes and calls calls his wife. What are we having for dinner tonight? And, then, and Kevin James thinks he's really going to negotiate. It doesn't happen. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, Don and Mike. How are hey, you doing today? Hey, Baldy. Hey, uh, Mike, I wanted to ask you about your golf game. Have you been logging much time on the course these days? No, I haven't, and I miss it. I, I just haven't. I mean, it's been about uh, probably over two months, uh, and I no, probably like played one, one time in that whole time. It's like a drug, boy. You just you need it again. Well, you know, I mean, I'm I'm looking for spring, but this winter I'm trying to do some other things. I'm uh, I'm working very very hard. Mike's getting to know his kids. I am actually going to try to familiarize myself with both my children. That's great. Yeah, it's terrific, and they're 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 so cute. <laughs> Fantastic, and I really hope that uh, before you know late March, early April, I, I I really get a hold on who they are. I'm looking forward to that, and then we'll see them next fall. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah. Yeah. How y'all doing? Great, thanks. I got a complaint. Fantastic. Love complaints. Now, I know you do. It's about this intern, Christine. What possible complaint could you have about Christine? She's too damn smarmy. Smarmy? That'd be smarmy. the last word in the no. world. Well, give me a definition of smarmy. You, sure. You're just describing her voice? No, I'm describing her altitude. What do you mean her altitude? When she answers the phone. Yeah, explain, and I want the definition of smarmy. I want you, as you, you're calling her smarmy, and I don't think she fits that description. Smarmy is like, hello. No. Well, no, no that's no, not smarmy. it's not what I agree with. Goodbye. No, that's well, not that's smarmy. smarmy. No, that's not smarmy. No. Yes, um, that is smarmy. No, it isn't. But what you're describing is, to be honest with you, the way that we've instructed her to answer the telephone calls. You, she has to be uh, make very quick decisions and decide who she wants to put on the air very quickly. So if she was curt with you... She was curt. It's because time is of the essence. <laughs> okay. And smarmy would be, 
Hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, you guys. I listen to your show. Can I... Uh, no, that's uh, not smart. That is yeah, smarmy. Yes, you're is. smarmy, that's man. Tough. That's not smart. No, no you're that's... smarmy. You don't know what smarmy means. Don't I? No. 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 What does smarmy mean? I just explained it to you. I gave you it's an like example. It's like a slicky boy. Like, hey, yeah. how you doing, man? I'm... I'm the coolest thing around, man. Smirky. Be another word. Smirky. Kind of a guy that's always smirking. Exactly. You know, okay. a guy that's kind okay. of slithery, okay. kind of that. slippery. I see that. I see that. That's not Christine. No. Well, I don't know. Oh, you know, come on now. Before, no, when I called before. Listen, you're just bitter because you call and she won't let you through. Because, you know, I don't blame her for not letting a guy through that doesn't know the definition of words. Oh, for <laughs> God's sake. Right. <laughs> when was that mean? How many times have you pleasured you? Pleasured yourself while you've been calling Christine. <laughs> Be honest with me. Do not lie to me. Never. 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 You've never touched yourself when you've called her? <laughs> liar. Liar. Not. I liar. don't believe you. Liar. There's the problem. Immediate disqualification. <laughs> Hello, Donna Mike. He's touching himself when he was calling us there. <laughs> Hello. Hey, man. How's it going? Touching himself all over. In the bad places, too. <laughs> oh. Not just there. Oh, God. All the places, Mike. Oh, man. Pillow talk. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and that guy has no idea what he's talking about. Of course not. She's the nicest person in there. Mm -hmm. but she, between all the people on this show, she is the nicest person. Yeah. I will give you that. Absolutely. Yes, and for a weekend show, you need to get Dr. Hitler, the guy who called in earlier with the one nut to get a show. Dr. Right. Hitler. Oh, the guy that didn't think I should uh, get an advantage in the peeing contest because I only got one kidney. All right. Dr. Hitler. That's <laughs> terrific. Hey, Christine, I bet you feel pretty good about getting a compliment from that guy. I looked down my show. Uh, yeah, what's happening, man? Say what you will about Dr. Hitler. Mm -hmm. He made good roads, man. <laughs> he was good in the beginning. That's what Marge Schott told me. <laughs> then he went nuts. Hello. Hey, what's the... That's the name of Marge Schott's gynecologist. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Hitler. <laughs> Hello, Marge Schott. Hey, what's Christine's cuff size? Don't know. You don't know? Nope. Even don't know. Idea. Never look there, sir. Uh, He's touching himself in the bad places, too. Always look her right in the eye. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a gentleman. You are. Fine gentleman. The fine gentleman from Virginia. And so are you, Mike. Bully. 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 So are you. Ditto. <laughs> Ditto. Hello. A couple of fine gentlemen doing this show. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Donna Mike. I don't have all day to wait for you. Oh, is this me? God. Jesus. Hello. Okay, I got your I got your definition of smarmy according to Merriam Webster. Revealing or marked by a smug, ingratiating, or false earnestness, a tone of self satisfaction. Exactly what we described. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. That's no a, problem, my that, pleasure. I like, to, I like to think that's one of my best traits. I think I'm kind of a smarmy guy. Exactly. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Goodbye. <laughs> don't patronize me, sir. I don't think I, I don't think there is a smarmy bone in your body. Oh, I think there are, Mike. No, no, this, uh, you're far too direct for that. Maybe my coccyx bone do you know who, me. Do you know who, in my opinion, is a little smarmy? Do you know your coccyx <laughs> is like your buttock? Yes, it is. Yeah, the word, it's, it's called tailbone. Coccyx, yet it has to do with your buttocks. <laughs> right, no, who's, all right, who's swarmy? Here at the station, I give you. Smarmy. Smarmy guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Mitch Johnson would be, uh, I think, King, King, king of the Smarmy. Smarmy. Yeah, yeah, okay. King, king of the Smarmy. All right, you're right. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's anybody else that would uh, fill the bill. Is that oh, Jeremy? No, no. Jeremy can be Smarmy. Steve Johnson is Smarmy. Ah, yes, absolutely. And I think Steve Goldstein, when he was here, was a bit Smarmy. Could be. He could be. Yeah, he had a Smarmy side. He had the potential. Mm -hmm. when, he, when he needed it, he could use it. That's right. Yes, yeah, so he had a Smarmy side. He could also be very direct. Hello, Donna Mike Joe. Uh, I have a story about hair being a different color. My dad dyed his hair one time because the time before he died, it was grayish yellow. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Your dad died? No, he went to dye his hair a different color because it, when he dyed it before, it, it turned out being yellowish gray and it was really icky looking. Oh, this would be like a, a story to follow up on Tim McWilliams who's constantly dyeing his hair. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And he dyed his hair flat black, and it ended up looking and feeling like the same texture of Ernie and Bert's hair from Sesame Street. Uh-huh. So and he... it was really ridiculous. It was so funny. It looked just like Ernie and Bert's hair. Did it look like Harvey Firestone? Don't know who that is. Roy Firestone, not Harvey Firestone. <laughs> Dom Capers, another guy with that bad, like, painted on hair. I saw a little of uh, Roy Firestone today interviewing Mike Tyson, and he had that orange hair again, and it's just hard to ignore. <laughs> Can't be real. Well, that was a lovely story. Thank you. You told it well with such enthusiasm. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye.
Uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, too. <laughs> Have a have a smarmy smarmy Christmas. Have a smarmy Christmas. Smarmy, okay. Wouldn't it be hey. great if, if there was really? How about a TV special? A, a smarmy, very, a very smarmy Christmas. Well, you know, hey. and, and you just start out with a guy like right up close to the camera. Hi, going, look who tuned in. <laughs> this is Brad. I'm sorry, Mitch. This is Mitch Johnson. Mitch Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> We're the Johnson brothers. Mitch and Steve. Hey. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yeah, but you're liking your Christmas, huh? But uh, you're pretty excited about everything. Yeah. I'm going to get better stuff than you. Because <laughs> I'm Mitch. Whoa. Brad or Steve, whatever those guys' whatever. names are back there. <laughs> Welcome to a smarmy Christmas. Hello, last call. we got a break because Coach Norm's coming on. Hello. Don? Yes? Hey, did you guys mention Vic Morrow in the Morrow game? Oh, Vic Morrow. Oh. He died during the making of the Twilight Zone. Right, yeah. Oh, got yeah. You know, blowed up real good on a helicopter crash. Combat. Miss Vic Morrow. Should have had him. <laughs> Thank, All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Do I win anything? No. no. Oh, come on. <laughs> Just my smarmy thing. Can I win, Christine? No. Come on, hang up. All right. Goodbye. We'll, we'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. On 1898, Spain owned Cuba outright. Think about it. Cuba owned by a disorganized parliament over 4,000 miles away. Cubans were in a constant... Cubans were in a constant state of revolt. In 1904, the United States decided to throw a little weight around and, uh... Who is it? It's a pizza guy. Again? It's a pizza guy, sir. <laughs> Pour the double cheese and sausage. So uh, here, dude. <laughs> Am I hallucinating here? Just what in the hell do you think you're doing? Learning about Cuba. Having some food. Mr. Spicoli, you're on dangerous ground here. You're causing a major disturbance on my time. You know, I've been thinking about this, Mr. Han. If I'm here and you're here, doesn't that make it our time? We certainly did nothing wrong with a little feast on our time. You're absolutely right, Mr. Spicoli. It is our time. Yours, mine, and everyone else's in this room. But it is my class. Hamilton, Brandt. Cornfeld, up front. Mr. Spicoli has been kind enough to bring us a stack. Be my guest. Help yourselves. Get a good one. Be done in my show. And why doesn't the press search harder when it involves pro-lifers? They certainly do when it's pro-choice. All right, so I came back. We back? Yes. Yeah, for this Green Bay. Oh, next is Green Bay. Lost the Death Row Creating their legacy. Don and Mike. I don't know if I call George McFly on the air or not. Maybe you call him during the next break for me, Robbie. Let's see if he wants to talk on the air. That's fair. Okay. Kind of be like my talk. secretary. He'll want to talk on the air. You call him now? You wouldn't even have to screen that call. You, you could call him. No, I mean, he loves being on the air. Yeah, that's true. You think he'd be bummed? You know he him better than I do. buried down in this message, man. Really? Buried? Well, let me let me call him. See, I know his... This will cheer him up. I know his on-air persona better than his off-air persona. I guess he could always say he didn't feel like talking. If he let me play you the message that he left me, and then you tell me what you think. Ah. Okay. Like, hey... Honey, I, um, don't pick up the phone. I want to uh, play that message that oh, George sorry, left. Oh, didn't even ring. All right, bye, boo-boo. Okay, love you. Love you, too. Okay, bye-bye. So he's uh, he's down, but you, you said he's got prospects, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. So he got a couple of job offers. Hello? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, good. Boo-boo, I raised it. I just remembered. Oh. Oh, honey. Oh, sorry, sorry. I wrote down his number, but I was just clearing all the messages. Could you recap the message? He sounded. Didn't you think he sounded very down in that message? Yeah, he did. Mm. Yeah. I'm very, very blown out. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Is that what yeah. he said? Yeah. Yeah, he's really down, man. Mm. Yeah, that was sad. All right, I love you. Oh, and he wants more advice from you? Yeah. Go, all right. Go figure that. I'm <laughs> very, very sick. <laughs> all right, bye, boo-boo. Although I don't, you know, I don't feel any guilt about that, that I don't think I did anything to, you did the opposite. You told him to get his act together. To, to yeah. have George get Didn't fired. You tell him, wasn't your advice to be happy and uh, do his job and kind of go in there and, you know, do what they told him to do? Follow the rules when he had to follow the rules, right? Yeah, when yeah. The, you know, when they're cracking the whip on you, that's when you have to kind of bend over and just take it. Right. 
That's it's a very fine line. Not not too many people know when to follow the rules, only when you have to follow the rules. Mm. Yeah, well, that's right, honey. Hold right. on, let me see. Wait a minute. What's his name? George McFly. I've got him under the M's. McFly. Uh -huh. I've got him. I let me see. Do you have his phone number there? Uh, downstairs. Do you want me to go look? Uh, I got a new number. I'll try it. All That's right. okay. Thanks. Call me if you need me. Okay. Bye, sweet thing. I will. Goodbye. Bye. That's my very sensitive wife. She sounds like she's in a very good good spirits yeah. today. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, we didn't watch that animal show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife's really depressed today. <laughs> she didn't sound like it when I answered the phone when she called for you. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Good thing I don't have anything going on with your wife. Because <laughs> i got to pick up the phone in the office. We have two extensions. Right. And as soon as Mike figures out that it's his wife, he picks up the phone, but he didn't say anything. Oh. I was being paid. Hey, George? No, it's Joan. Joan, hey, it's Don and Mike. Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, hey Joan. Joan, how you doing? <laughs> Fine. Listen, how's George doing? He's uh, hanging in there. Yeah, I, I just got his message. We're on the air, Joan, if that's oh, okay. Are. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know if George wanted to... Talk on the air or anything? Yeah, probably. Hold on a second. Okay. So anyway, uh, Mike's wife calls today in the office, and I think I want to go hello, like Major Bill. Right. And he says, "Hey, is is Mike there? Hey, George, hold on a second. She says, "Hey, is Mike there?" And I said, "Oh, he might be here." <laughs> and meanwhile, Mike has picked up the telephone and he's not saying anything on the right. extension. Right. right. So it's like if I had something to go with your wife, if she said to me like, "Oh." Listen, I really love you so much, then you, you know, you would have caught us. Yeah, like you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Not me, Mike, but maybe somebody else on the staff. Yeah. yeah. All right, Mr. Charlie Broyhill. Carlos Broyhill. Uh -huh. All right, well, here he is now, uh, disc jockey extraordinaire George McFly. Hello, George. Thanks, Don. Hi, Mike. Hi there, George. Hi, I'm sorry uh, to hear about it, man. Hey, man. Thanks, man. Just hey, got man. your message right before I went on the air today. Yeah. So I was out running a bunch of errands. Unfortunate. That's Writing right. was on the wall, buddy. That's why I didn't call you earlier. How you doing? Um, well, do, uh, relieved. Yeah, relieved. Okay, all right. That's better than being bummed out. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've been actually sitting in the standing in the tub. Joni, thank God for wives, because I have a hairy butt, and she was just trimming it with a groomsman. Uh, your wife was trimming your ass hair. Yeah. On the inside or the outside? Inside and out. I mean, it's terribly embarrassing. Oh, it is. Oh, it's yours. you were just having your uh, butt hair trim. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I, you can't get back there. Oh, George, how much hair do you have back there? That's weird, because you notice I'm not a very hairy person. Like, on my chest, I have some and everything. But just all of a sudden, I don't know if it's from the steroids in the past. Or... She must really love you, man. But Sasquatch wow. ass. She must, re she must really love you. Wow. Yeah. wow. Have you opened up those two pillows and then oh my God. got the jungle in there? Did you soak for a while before you started that procedure? No, it's not with a razor. It's with that a dry groom thing. Yeah. Oh, oh, the better. A beard trimmer. <laughs> oh. And women find it, uh, you know, not that it matters because I'm married, but women uh, find it repulsive when a guy has a hairy butt. Yeah. Uh, I think most other guys find it repulsive, George. Well, uh, how about you guys? I mean, do you? I don't have a particularly hairy button. I got a lot of hair all over my body. No. I am virtually hairless everywhere. No, no, yeah, say, you got some Indian in you, though, don't you? <laughs> which which one are you, you talking, talking to? to? You're talking yeah. to me? No, George, that's a made-up name. No, I know it is, but, I mean, literally, don't you have some Indian in you? I don't know. You know I'm adopted. I don't know what I am. No, I bet you do, because, you know, Indians, the Cherokees and all those people, the Cherokee people, they are uh, hairless. Okay, listen. Tell us about... What happened? Now, uh, contractually, are you okay to be on the radio now? I know that they had yelled at you before for coming on our show there. Yeah, did you, do you remember what, what I told you, what the write-up actually said? That I, I'm no longer able to, you know, talk on the air with you guys. Yeah, and you had also gone on the air at your other friend station there in, in Denver, right? Yeah, but they just called me Freaky George. It wasn't, it, you know, we didn't say McFly or anything. Uh -huh. All right, so, I mean, is it okay now for you to do this? You're not in any violation or anything? Yeah, I'm completely unemployed. Okay, all right. Well, listen, buddy, what happened? Um, oh, well, you know what happened. I mean, my contract was up, and, you know, Don, there's so much truth in the heart of it. That's why I told you I feel relieved. And I mean, no kidding. It's because I will not do, I will not play that music ever again. You know, I, I'm not, I wouldn't let my daughter listen to it. You know? It, well, yeah, did Georgia Station, like a hardcore rap station? Yeah. Yeah, like, uh... Hey, holler if you hear me. Hey, let me hear you say, uh. You know, uh yeah, I know. That yeah. It's annoying. I mean, it's really, really bad. <laughs> All right, so listen, you got canned. Did you get any severance? Uh, no. Ooh. No? Ouch. Don't they have to give you some kind of severance? 
No, my deal was up. Oh, no. All right, then what are the prospects? Let's work on the future. Okay. Uh, West Palm Beach, mm. I got something cooking in the morning. Oh, that's a good place for you. Mm. Well, you know, I, thing is, remember, guys, I've never been about money. I mean, I'd do this for food money if it was the right format. Remember how much fun it used to be? Well, I'm just saying the area. I was thinking more like the area. Like, you, you'd be a... You're a Florida beach kind of guy. No, you could get like a Rockford Files trailer and live down by the beach. Yeah, you'd be I happy. Love, you'd is like that even legal. You'd like the climate, wouldn't you? Remember, yeah. Remember like Mel Gibson, a lethal weapon when he had a trailer on the beach. Is that legal or is that just? That's a... very much for those of you trying to get a mental picture of George McFly. Yes. Please think of Mel Gibson and how scatterbrained he is in the movies Lethal Weapon, and that is right. Our man George. Ah. Scatterbrained. All right, that's that's option number one. George is West Palm Beach. What else you got cooking? Two things going on in Chicago, believe it or not, my hometown. Wow. All right, what are those opportunities? Um, there is uh, it, it, this latest rage with this company is Jam and Oldies. It's like, uh, I don't know, I guess like Donna Summer Bad Boys and... Uh, uh, sounds to me like music you'd hate. No, music that I dig. Music, you know mm. I mean? Disco? D well, are, you, are you a disco guy, George? No, but anything with a beat. See, my problem was... With you were just rap. working at a station with a beat. <laughs> No, but there was no, there was no intros. I don't want to get too inside and boring, but I, you know it was you just, get inside. It's all right. Our audience understands you. When you talk about intros, you mean since George plays records, he wants to work at a station that has lots of time on the intros of records where he can talk. Yeah, that's right. understandable. Yeah, and that's that's normal. Right. And so uh, at this anyway, so this uh, jam and oldies format mm -hmm. um, looks good in Chicago. What is the format in West Palm Beach? Oh, completely mainstream, straight ahead. Uh, Top 40. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, great goo goo dolls, that kind of stuff. That already sounds better to me than yeah. you going and playing disco records. But what's your third option? Okay, uh, Dallas. With Joel Salkowitz. The, the guy, he's a great guy. Joel Salkowitz? He, he hired me. Joel Salkowitz from the one up yes, in New York? Yes, from Hot 97. Joel oh, Salkowitz is the Antichrist. He's what? Satan, Satan, Satan. Satan. You guys even know him? Yes, yeah. we know him from Hot 97. Oh, he's a great guy. What oh, he's, he's a Nimrod. No. Christ, they brought him in to try to step on our show when is we worked at Emmis. Is it still Emmis that he's working for? No, he's with Chancellor. Mm. Mm. I don't, anyway, from what I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust Joel Salkowitz. Just a feet up, very laid back. Uh -uh. I love that. He's a dick, In man. fairness, we didn't have a tremendous amount of contact. But do you him. remember they brought him in to be like an out-of-town consultant for our show? Yeah, we see that goofy guy. Like I remember him. You do. Big, bushy beard, <laughs> little round glasses. <laughs> hey, your show's good, but, uh, but I, you, you guys are just doing too many bits. Well, you know. we got to play the hits, man. I remember. I, listen, that's one thing I do remember. Every goddamn consultant and program director that yeah, ever they gave me a hard thing. time, yeah. mm -hmm. I remember. And Joel Salkowitz stifles creativity. I mean, he's I with a bad company. The company, the company we hate it. Yeah. Just the opposite. But, you know, I was, I was young and he just left me alone, you know? Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, that guy's bad news, man. What I recall, great guy. Uh, but listen, but next, you I recall... make your own decisions, George. You really sure. do. Sure. Next. Uh, oh, yeah. There's a midday opening. It's it's Star in L.A. Ah, oh, that would be a good job for you. You know, ju just because, you know, L.A. and normal format again. That's a good station. Star 98.7, you'd be good there. Yeah. And so, um, remember, these. I got no offers yet, but all bites, nibbles, you know. People calling me up and just wondering what's all going right. on. Whatever. Here's how I'd rank them, okay? First would be L.A., okay, because mm -hmm. you'd be able to make the most money there and get the most exposure. Right. Second, I'd say West Palm Beach. Because you'd be able to branch out and be creative doing a morning show. Third, disco in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Fourth option, Joel Salkowitz. Salkowitz, buddy. Do you guys know Chris Schiebel? Chris Schiebel is one of my best friends. I'm not, no lie. Cause he, no, I'm kidding. No, uh, no kidding. This guy is putting on a station in Chicago. Is he the guy in Chicago? Yeah, no, this is another one, though. This is a top 40. But, uh, Don, it's called a tri-frequency. Help me understand this. It's like 6,000 watts. Oh, they got, so they have three different dial positions because they don't totally cover Chicago. I'll tell you this. As I was running down Salkowitz, mm -hmm. I would run up Chris Schiebel. Chris Schiebel is a good guy, man. Yeah. Do you remember him, Buzz? I, the name's familiar, but I can't put a Buzz, face with it. Yeah, remember? He, he, worked at, he worked at WLS when we worked at uh, WBB. He worked at WLS when I worked there. He's... Uh, Kind of pasty, almost looks albino. B blonde? Yes, yeah. uh, very, very blonde and asexual. For a long time we thought he might be a <laughs> queer, but as it turns out he was just... I think I met him. Yeah. He was just like not into men and not into women. He's just asexual. Really? Interesting. Well, 
Yeah, yeah but, a, but a good guy. Radio. Mm -hmm. Really good guy, though, man. But he's got all, all day parts open, and like I said, it's, it's, it's home. But when you press, let's say you're driving around Chicago, if you press scan, you don't pick it up. So, I, I, man, I want to believe in it. I want them to win. I would put him above Salkowitz. I mean, and you can drop my name with Chris Schiebel. Please do. He's one of the few, one of the few guys in this business I get along with. Mm -hmm. I didn't put two and two together, but I, rem I recall that you worked at LS, and so did he. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so anyway, so that jam and oldies format is going on in Dallas and in Chicago, yes. and they're going to fly me out next Saturday to do an air shift in Dallas. I just think it, you're not going to be happy playing disco music, George. Well, he wanted me to. He asked me if I'd be comfortable. Um, Talking to the listeners and, and not shucking and jiving over the intros, which I thought I was going to be able to do, but it's the demo is 35 year old women. Here I'm a 35 year old guy, and uh, you know just more topical, almost like a hot AC approach. Well, listen, you got to do what you think is right, but I, I know the real George McFly is the guy that we've been talking to right now, who would probably really like to talk about his wife cutting his ass hair. Mm -hmm. And I know that if you go to work at a station that is targeting 35-year-old females... Yeah, they would want to hear about the ass trip. Right. Sorry about that. I just, you know, all of a sudden I was back in the hallways at WABA. Sorry about that, George. You relaxed okay. me too much. No, I mean, I mean that, okay. that part of it is very embarrassing. But, uh, you know, the fact is... I mean, hey, you know what I mean, George? You are, you are a crazy individual... And I could picture you working at a station that targets 35-year-old females, and the first time you do something that's off the wall, they're going to call you and give you all that crap. You say, picture the ideal 35-year-old woman. <laughs> we want you to talk about the things you're talking about. Yeah. Talk about Ally McBeal, buddy. Yeah, that you'd probably be frustrated in that situation. You know, that's what's kind of exciting and why I said at the beginning of the conversation that it's almost like a relief because you're right. Now... It's not like it was 10 years ago where L.A. is calling New York, calling uh, you know Chicago for when I was a night jock. I'm getting these weird little nibbles like yeah. Anchorage mornings or West Palm mornings. And hey, you'd be good in, that, in Alaska, George. I think you could handle Anchorage. Oh, I'd love it. I'm serious. I know you would. You might want to consider that because you could be a bigger fish in a smaller pond. I mean, let's face it, the uh, entertainment options in Anchorage, Alaska have got to be pretty limited. Oh, I do it. I mean, I mean seriously, one guy got killed by uh, a moose killed him last year. It was in the paper because he's, he rammed his car into this moose. It's, and it's the last Should have been on that Fox show last yeah, night. Yeah, I tell you, those moose are dangerous. They were, they were on that show last right, night. Hold on, George. i got a perspective off for you right here. A guy really? in Easton, Pennsylvania says he used to know you. Hello? Wow. Uh, actually, Easton, Maryland. Oh, Easton, Maryland. Yes. Who is it? Uh... George. Beaver? Yes, it is. Hey, it's the Beave. I think he called your show before, Don. Is it Beaver Cleaver? Uh, no, I'm not. That's what uh, I was known as when George and I were living together back in 1986. 87, my friend. Were, uh, were you lovers? No. <laughs> All right. I was just curious. <laughs> yeah, he was there for two weeks, and then he split. I don't know. Are you a program director now? Uh, yes, I am. Where? CEI? Uh, uh, that would be it. W-C-E-I. All right. All right, listen, hold on a second there, Gary. George, George, George. Yeah, Where is that? That is, George, that is so small. That, that is, is nothing, man. Small. Yeah. That's nothing. Okay. I'm going to guess that the, but the guy probably offered you $16,000 a year there. Maybe. Hey, listen, I mean, um, is it true that the, the DC-101 have mornings open? DC-101 sucks. You know what I mean, but if I went there. Yeah, if you went there, they just want a guy that's going to play records. Oh, man. All right, listen, um, we got to go, but here, here's my recommendation. Like no, I say. Thank you. Uh, I mean, this was very dull conversation, but thank you. No, no, no. You should go after the job in L.A. Okay. Then you should try West Palm Beach. Then you should try Chris Schiebel. Anchorage. Then Anchorage, yes. <laughs> and you know what I'd say? Easton, Maryland, before you'll work for Joel Salkowitz. Oh, okay. I think George, uh, George, Joel Salkowitz. Beautiful I, country down there in Easton. I swear to God, Joel Salkowitz is an evil guy, man. <laughs> he doesn't want DJs to be DJs. He's one of those guys that was a frustrated DJ, right. and he gets his rocks off by telling disc jockeys to shut up. <laughs> I swear to God, I don't, re I don't recall that. Uh, he was, he's been nothing but a pleasant memory to me. Well, you got to follow your own heart too, you know. Yeah. You know, I mean, and just. You know, as I'm humbled and just sitting, uh, sharing a seat with my ass at home, it's just nice when these people call, you yeah. know? Yeah. All right, well, listen, let us know what happens. And if you need anything, please do call. Well, I, I, I was kind of wondering. Remember what we talked about all along? 
how, you know... You can't you know, work on this show, George. Well, the thing is, is I don't even want any money. Just put me up. You, George, you can't work on this show. Well, I, don't, I don't have room for you. I got Mike. I got Buzz. Yeah, I know. I got Robbie, Carlos Broyhill, Christine. No room at the inn. Sorry, George. I know, but just... It, no. You know I listen to you guys every night. And it, 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 I know. It, it, appreciate it. it. But, George, listen, really, me and Mike got a thing going here. Sorry. And you got to make a living anyway, George. You can't come up here and work for free. I, uh, <laughs> Live in my basement. You can't do that. <laughs> through bankruptcy, I am 100% debt-free. Good. No, that's good. All the more reason to, uh, you know, start uh, putting some money away. Well, okay, yeah. See, guys, my future future looks bright. My father does pretty well, you know, and I found out in, like, about 10 years or wherever, <laughs> I'll have, like, a million bucks. Oh, so when your dad dies, you're going to do good? Yeah. How, you old, might how think, old's your dad? Uh, 59. You might want to think about hiring a guy to kill your dad. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, you see, but my, so money, I'm going be homeless. I have family. All right, well, but look, good. George... You know I love you, but this show's not an option for you. I'm so, this is the second time that I have had to have this. This is the same conversation I had to have with Louis the Retard right before we went on the air today. Well, but come on. I mean, am I Louis the Retard? No, you're not, but I had to say the same thing to him as I'm saying to you. You know, after 13 years, we uh, we have it pretty well uh, oiled, uh, you know, honed and refined, George. And let me, let me say that again, though, that you're right, Mike. You're right, but can you make a great show uh, tremendous? I, I don't know. I mean... George, listen, I'm very happy with the way everything's going right now on this show. I'd well, like to no, help you out. You, you stick a gun in your mouth because I have a fatigue factor, don't I? Don't I? What? I have a fatigue factor. George, it has, nothing to, so long. it has nothing to do with you. I'm happy with Mike. Buzz does a great job. I got Rob A. Spiewak in the wings. Hell, there's hardly room enough for all of us to talk now as it is. No, I agree. You know, so you, you, basically you made my decision for me. I have to do mornings. And stay somewhere. Okay. Right. Listen, what, just be happy, man. If you need any advice, if you need a reference, call me. Thank, no, thank you so much, man. And I, and, I, and I mean that. And would you like to say anything to your former program director, that son of a bitch who's probably listening to this right now? He, he, was actually, he actually made a phone call to the guy in West Palm for me and talked me up. You know, Don, it's not like that. You hate that when it's that nice. You know what? I hate that when a guy is two faced like that. When a guy on one hand will fire you, but then will call the next guy to tell him to hire you. But there was because you know, if I'm the guy in West Palm, I go, "If this guy's so great, why'd you fire him?" But there was truth in the heart of it. I couldn't stand the music. He knew it. Finally, he wanted somebody that really believed in it. All right, so you don't want to say anything bad about him. That's okay. Yeah, it's just not in my character. You know that. Okay, I got you. You know, and now that I'm done. One thing I will say, though, is I am done, and I will never compromise uh, compromise myself again. Good. I am done with Sherbin Net Rap Radio. Never again. All right, good. Well, Even listen. if I have to dig ditches, I swear to God. All right, well, let me know how it goes, and good luck with Joni uh, trimming your ass here. I'm done. Okay, all right, beautiful. Oh, thanks, good luck, George. All right, thanks don't, so much. Good luck. Don't be a stranger. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. All right, Bye-bye. there is George McFly. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> he's something, isn't he? He certainly is. You gotta love him, though. And hey, he's a, you know he's a guy that knows how to get another job, so he'll be yeah. uh, he'll be fine. No, I mean that guy's talented as all get out, man. Mm-hmm. He's talented. <laughs> no way I can stand working with him. <laughs> he's even if you had the big old coronary, Mike. <laughs> he's an interesting. Uh, he's an interesting guy. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen, George. I hate to get your hopes up. Hello. Hello, how you doing? Hey, Don on my show. Hey, good to talk to you guys. Uh, I just want to uh, let you guys know, uh, through the grapevine here at work, uh, there is uh, an affiliate with the L.A. Lakers uh, who is uh, having – this is a high gentleman, by the way. This is a – What? Come on. Wait, you're you got slurring m- through this whole thing. you got marbles in your mouth. Now, first off, are you going to say something bad about a member of the Lakers? No, definitely not. I am from California. There's not a way – there's no way a bad thing could come out of my mouth about the Lakers. Lakers are my team along with the Sacramento Kings. Are you drunk? I am from Sacramento. Are you drunk? <laughs> am I drunk? Yes. Well, uh, let's, let's not talk about that now. Are you? All right. Mm-hmm. Good call, Mike. Mm-hmm. All right, so you've had one on a no, Friday no, really, afternoon. Sir, though. Really, really. Come on, what do you want? Okay, well, there's a... Uh... Now, you said affiliate. Do you mean an associate? No, he's uh, he was caught having sexual relations, him and two buddies with uh, two teenagers. I'm not sure if you've heard about it, but... Uh... Who, you, you're speaking in. I swear to God, I, you are speaking in such veiled references. Are you talking about a guy 
who plays for the Lakers. Uh, uh, Reynolds. Reynolds. So you do want to say something bad about a member of the Los Angeles Lakers? No, well, uh, well, hey, if it's, it's what's what he's doing. And well, you know something? If it surfaces in the newspaper, we'll certainly know about it. Right. Isn't, isn't it a great thing, though? Love Isn't it a great our thing? Our dreams come true. Is it what a great thing? Wow. Hey, hey, you know his excuse was though. His excuse after he got caught. No, uh, listen, listen. I don't. You can't say that because that is slanderous. First of all, I don't know not. So as oh. far as I know, it's not true. When it services in the paper, you'll know. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. Have another thank drink. You. Okay. All right. Two. Bye bye. God. Hello, Don and Mike. Oh man. Hi, hi Don and Mike. It's Angela. How you doing? Hey, we're doing great. Thank you, I'm Angela. I'm sixty six, trying to make it home. But anyhow, that guy George that you were talking to and being very generous with. George, he, listen. He, he kind of reminds me of Lutard. I mean, mm. he just didn't get the point that there was no room for uh, him listen. at your station. George is oh, nothing like. like George is nothing like Lewis. George is, first off, a very talented guy. And he's humble also. And he was very humble and okay. he was very thankful and he's very respectful. And George has a good heart, man. It's just George really loves this show. And the whole time I've known George, it's kind of been his dream to work with me. But, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's just not going to happen, man. Oh, okay. He told me that it was his dream to work with me, though. That's what he said <laughs> to me when he spoke to me in private. He said that a long time ago. He said, Did he really? He said, I want to, and Mike O'Mara, I've wanted to work so with you for my whole life. Bit, Rob, huh? you too? Yeah. Oh, Buzz, did he ever speak to you? Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but yeah, I, he did. <laughs> well, anyhow. Oh, uh, you guys are all just jealous because there's someone else that wants to work with me. That's okay. That's true. That's all right. Don't be threatened. I'm not leaving you. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I'm not going anywhere. This is the Don and Mike Show. But suddenly, you get married and you're supposed to be this entirely different guy. I don't, I don't, I don't feel different. I mean, take take yesterday for example. We were we were out at the Olive Garden for dinner, which was lovely, and uh, I had to look over at a certain point during the meal and see a, a waitress taking an order, and uh, and I found myself wondering uh, what color her underpants might be, her panties. Uh, odds are they're probably basic white cotton underpants. But I, I started thinking, well, maybe they're maybe they're maybe they're silk panties. Maybe maybe it's maybe it's a thong. Maybe it's a maybe it's something really cool that I don't even know about, you know. And uh, I I started feeling. I guess what I'm trying to say is that that now that I'm married, I, I'm definitely feeling a little freaked out about the fact that I'm going to have sex with only one person. For the rest of my life. The Don and Mike Show. I miss you. Yeah, you should. You never come see me. I've been busy. Everybody's busy. And don't lie to me. I know your father forbids you're coming down here. He doesn't. Honest. He just doesn't want us to talk about you in the house. Well, you can go shit in his ass. Oh, I shouldn't use that kind of talk. Don't let me ever catch you talking that way. Come and taste their friendship. The Don and Mike Show. Okay, where are you listening to our show right now? Yes, where are you, good Americans? Hello, Don and Mike Show. Hello, how are you, gentlemen? Hi, we're great, thank you. Uh, okay. Um, you, uh, you all are still playing the um, Where Are You game? Yes, we've had nobody even remotely interesting. That's yeah. right, no, okay. not yet. Well, I'm in my boss's chair right now with my pants down, pleasuring myself. Uh, I believe she goes to the top of the list. Now we're getting somewhere. Write that down. But how do we know that? How do you know this? Well, here, here's my boss's chair. Can you hear? That's his chair. Describe his office, please. Describe your boss's office. Okay. He has a, a computer with a little um, desk. He has uh, two black cabinets. He has an off-white cabinet. It has accounts in all the one where all his checkbooks and all that stuff are. Oh, is he gone? Is he he gone? has um, settlements, which are for houses and all that, in the off-white cabinet. Okay. Is he gone for the day? Yes, he is gone for the what day. What would your boss do if he knew you were doing that? He'd probably... He, He'd probably like it. That's That's jumpy. Jumpy. <laughs> He'd probably hit the fan first. And well, then... You know what? I think what you really better do is take all your clothes off first. Yes. And the idea of you being in your boss's chair totally nude. Totally naked. Okay. Well, then here we go. I guess has the rest of the office left for the day, too? Yes. So you're the only one in the office? Mm-hmm. 
Listen to this. Who's the celebrity you think you most resemble? How come everything on the show ends up being dirty? <laughs> <laughs> life, um, life goes like that. The best um, celebrity I represent, um, that's going to be a hard one. Oh, please. You know, that's been such a task for people lately. I, I'd urge everybody to give it some thought right now. Yeah. Even if you're never even thinking about calling the show, <laughs> just give it some thought. So if ever you get the urge to call the show and we ask... Excellent. You're ready. You'll have the answer, because that's the number one most asked question on this show. Who's Absolutely. the celebrity you most resemble? We recognize the fact that it's a difficult thing to do. It, yep. it is very hard. Well, it's two people. Okay. My top half is probably Pan, um, Pamela Anderson. Well, we hear that a lot. Uh, my top half. And your bottom half? But, well, the whole, like, from neck down. Neck down. Dan um, Aykroyd? The face and all that would probably be... Walter Matthau? Shania Twain. Shania, Shania Twain. Twain. So you're saying you look like Shania Twain with big boobs? Mm-hmm. Really? Mm. Wow. And are you naked yet? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, but listen, for all we know, this looks like, uh, what's her name from Hee Haw? Who was that fat girl? Lulu. Lulu, Lulu. from Hee Haw. Lulu. <laughs> <laughs> is, she no, no, still, no. is she still with us, Rob? No. No, she's no. D-E-A-D, Mike. No, she's not. <laughs> yeah, she is. Yeah, she's not. not. Keep yeah. fooling yourself. Stop it. Keep killing me. Just stop it. Accept it. So you're telling me that you look like Shania Qu Twain, except with the gigantic robo boobs, and you're totally naked in your boss's chair? Yep, and it's a big, and I got good back support because it's a real high chair, too, which is really good. You know, there are moments when I don't care if they're lying. Mm -hmm. This might be one of them. I'm simply, I'm picturing Shania Twain with big boobs naked in an office chair. Well, why don't you do what you said you were going to do? I am. Right now? I have been the whole time I've been talking to you. Oh, my. Really? Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Really? Now, don't make a mess. No, God. Oh, I can't because it's not leather. It's, it's, um... Cloth? Yes. Oh. A cloth chair. Cloth chair. chair. In black, too, so definitely can't. Oh, my. Uh, you is know there what? anything in the office... I bet she's lying to Is us. there anything in the office you could play with or, or make a sound with that might, uh... How about a pencil, pencil sharpener or stapler? Stapler. She produced that stapler very Either that quickly. or she just keeps opening her legs up and closing them again real quickly. <laughs> What's your first name? Carrie, K-A-R-I. Carrie, you're so very naked. You're in the contest. Hold, okay, thank you. Hold on, please. Although you might have to do something ex extra special at the end of the round if we select you as a finalist. Okay. Okay, hold on, please. Carrie is so very nude. Okay, that's, uh, that's one. Mm-hmm. She's in all right. Let's go to a guy in Iowa who says he's calling us from a manhole. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike Show. What a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Carrie had a manhole, didn't she? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Manhole man. Hello, Doug. Oh, we just lost the manhole guy. Doug. D-D-U-G-H-G. -G. All right, here's a guy from Virginia who's calling from his crawl space. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Don and Mike. You're in your crawl space? Yeah, I'm in my crawl space. Are you wearing your clown suit? <laughs> a tribute to John Wayne Gacy. <laughs> he's wearing his clown suit and he's got a trowel. No, actually, I'm wearing my jumpers and uh, I came down here. I had some rodents and in my home. I'm putting out some mouse bait. Is it, is it mice or rats? Uh, mice. Uh, rodents, mice. Rodents, mice. Well, rodents, mice. <laughs> right, right. So I'm I'm crawling down here and uh, I'm beneath the home and I'm putting out some bait. The home, is it a, yep. is it like a mobile home? <laughs> no, no, it's a town home. It's town a town home. home. Well, this is no offense, not thick enough, I don't think. Yeah, unless you had like uh, you know like that movie Willard, you had rats crawling all over you. Hello, Don and Maisha. Now here's a guy who says he's calling from a chamber that's used for electronic research. Yeah, Don. How do we verify this? Don. Yeah. I'm calling you from the uh, cavernous expanse of Mike O'Mara's bowels. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. It's not on the screen he's calling from a chamber, not from your bowels. It sounded like my bowels. <laughs> Hello, Don and Maisha. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, listen. I'll say it again. We're looking for exotic locations where yes. you, our listeners, are listening to this, our show. I should point out, the, the good example really is a guy called one time from a slaughterhouse, and it was uh, pretty interesting. He was a big winner. He was a big, big winner. Hello? Hey. Yeah. I'm in between flights right now, but periodically I'll listen to you guys when I'm in my airplane flying from Spokane, Washington, over to Seattle. 
Yeah, see, uh, if you were in the air, it would be, uh, you know, not necessarily a winner, but it would be a better one. It would be interesting, at least. You want me to go sit in the plane? It's right next to me. If you could, if, if you could sit in the plane and, like, get plane sounds. Blow the horn or whatever you want. Blow the horn. <laughs> what would you do? I mean, get in the plane and blow the horn. Because they don't have horns on an airplane. Like in Caddyshack, that horn that Rodney had that goes. Da, 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 da. Hey, Judge, look at your boat. All right, listen, goodbye. Goodbye. Let's um... blow the horn. <laughs> Turn on the directional signal. Let's take a call from Jeannie, who oh, says so she's a dominatrix, and she's calling from her cage. Ooh, hi, Jeannie. In Las Vegas. Oh, hello, Don and Mike. Hello, Jeannie. <laughs> What's happening, Jeannie? Jeannie, are you going to uh, do something dominatrix for us? Go. <laughs> oh, Jeannie. I thought about your friend, um, OJ. You could send him here, and um, I'd let him come in my playroom, get in my cage. You mean OJ Fisher? Yeah, now listen, uh, Jeannie. Yeah, hey, time up, Jeannie. <laughs> um, I could do that, too. Fantastic, Jeannie. Yeah. Jeannie. Uh, oh, Jeannie. Suspension. I tell you, Jeannie, I'm uh, I'm really excited about that uh, leather whip that you got. Uh, <laughs> where's Major Bellows? We're really looking forward to it, Jeannie. Uh, Jeannie, you got to take that leather off, Jeannie. We're going to get in trouble right now. Uh, just let me out. Let me out of your bottle, Jeannie. Agman, buddy. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Oh, hey, Jeannie, beat my liver. <laughs> <laughs> beat my liver, Jeannie. That's great. Jeannie, you can call me Jr. Really having a great time with Jeannie. She's a dominatrix, and she's showing her navel now. Well, that was, now uh, how are we supposed to know that you're really a dominatrix and you're really calling us from your cage? Um, I'm going to let you hear the bars. The bars. Okay. Yeah. Oh, i got to put my phone by it. Okay. Can you hear the bars? Hold on. Yeah, I can hear the sound of what sound is. It sounds like metal bars. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Do you have a whip? Um, that's in the closet. No, oh, you might want to get that and pull that out. That would uh, add credibility to your story, I think. And I think for, any, for anybody listening to this show, we like everything out of the closet. <sighs> yes, we do. What, are, what other props do you have handy, Jeannie? Um, I Jeannie? got a flogger. A flogger. A flogger. Oh, I, you know, I'd, I'd uh, <laughs> I'll tell you right now, I sure appreciate you flogging me, Jeannie. <laughs> a flogger. What is a flogger, Jeannie? Oh, a flogger is kind of a soft leather deer skin, about 20 different little whips. Yeah, little whips. It's, uh, it's got little braids coming out of it, and she can flog you with it. Was that like, like a cat o' nine tails thing? Yeah, it's kind of like um, a, it's got several little pieces, looks like hair. It does, a flogger doesn't hurt. Oh, yes, it does, Jeannie. A uh, cat o' nine tails. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, well, let's hear the sound. Let's hear you, um... Throw your flogger around then, please. Come on, flog us, Jeannie. Okay, this is the flogger. Come on, flog is good. No, oh, Jeannie. Let me take my uniform off, Jeannie. <laughs> yeah, it's best if you take your underwear off, too. Oh, sure, I'll take my boxers off, Jeannie. Are you really a dominatrix? Yes. Let me hear you dominate me and Mike right now. Come on. My Come on, let's go, Jeannie. Come on, dominate us. Dominate you? Yeah. I can't dominate you over the phone, then everybody would know what I did. Oh, uh, Jeannie, come on, you know, fun. We want to be, want to be flogged, Jeannie. I, I'm wearing my Air Force uniform, and my uh, ten-gallon hat. At the same time. Come Jeannie. on, I'm Your waiting Air to be dominated. Uniform? What? Your Air Force uniform? Uh, oh, Jeannie. he doesn't even get the idea that Jeannie's like you don't want to get it. Anyway, so let's point, Jeannie. All right, hello, Don and Mike show. Hello. Hello, who's this? This is Tina. Hello, Tina. Where are you listening to our show? Annapolis. And where are you listening to our show? I am listening at an adult video store. They have all kinds of sex toys and videos and magazines, and there's even one of those little rooms in the back. That is the big one. Now, <laughs> if you were to go to one of those little rooms in the back, mm -hmm. uh -huh. then you might inch into the lead. Oh, gee whiz. You know, you know, drop a quarter. Right. I don't think there's, I don't think any women ever go back there. Right. See, that's why you'd exactly. be right up to the front of the line. Is there a person working there? Uh-huh, at the counter. You should ask whether it's okay for women to go into the, uh, you know, the, the room. Why don't you let us talk to that person? Okay. Even better, that way we could verify that you're really a, an adult bookstore. Sure, hold on a second. Um. Hello? Yes, hello. This is the uh, Donna Mike radio show. Can I just ask you a couple questions? Is this woman really calling us from an adult bookstore, video store? Well, she is, but I really can't say anything. Do you have those little booths in the back? Uh, I really shouldn't say anything. Would it be Would it be safe for her to go in one of those booths? Would it Would it be safe for a lady to go in there? No, See, we're, it wouldn't be safe. No. They're not allowed. Oh, they're not oh, allowed to go back no. there. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Would you put her back on, please? Hello. Sorry, Tina. You're not allowed to go back there. That's oh. a shame, Tina. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you, though. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Now, listen. Now, we're getting somewhere. Yes, we're starting. You know, the, the curve mm -hmm. is starting to go upward. Now, we're making some progress. Let me make sure. Carrie, are you still naked? Uh, Carrie? 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 
Oh, Carrie. Um, hello, Carrie. Oh, Carrie. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Carrie. She was making for a while. It's wide open because Carrie is not online. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, oh, hey, there Carrie. she is. <laughs> Are you still making? I had to put a little bit on because someone came in. Oh, oh what did you have to put on? My shirt. <laughs> and who came in? A person that works here. A person that works there, and so you, they, they found you with just your shirt on, pantyless, and just your legs hanging out? Well, no, I, I flew my bottom half underneath the chair. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, table. Yeah, All right, well, you should get naked again immediately. Okay. Right. Hold on, let me go shut the door. Is the, uh, the worker that came in male or female? Male. Ooh, male. Baby. Even better. He sounds like a penthouse letter, doesn't it? Play that music in the background. I was working late one night when I walked into the boss's office. <laughs> oh, Carrie, I, I was just coming back to take care of some paperwork, and I didn't notice that you were, what are you doing sitting at the boss's chair? All right, listen, uh, stay there, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll come right back to you. And we'll take more calls about where you are. Where are you? That's okay. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. A bitter cold night. The Giants with a victory against the Eagles tonight could reduce the edge to a half a game. I'm not on camera now. We're in Philadelphia at Franklin Field. The score, the New York football Giants 13, the Philadelphia Eagles 9. The Don and Mike Show. Always the exception to every rule ever made. Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. Hi there. We were great. Okay, where are you listening to the show? Here's what I don't believe. First off, the show's not even on in Seattle. Right. Okay. And this is a guy calling on our local lines, saying he's calling from Seattle. He's on the operating room table about to get a sex change. Oh, please. This is just a testament to how naive Christine Kerner is. I mean, that is a compliment, Christine. That's right. It's innocence. Hello? Hi, Don and Mike. Yeah, you big liar. <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire. Oh, I'm serious. Very serious. I'm not on the operating table. I'm on the pre -op, uh, in the pre-op room awaiting surgery at 8 o'clock. Yeah. Well, then how did you hear the show if you're in Seattle? Uh, I've got my... Uh, my uncle in uh, Washington called me and uh, knew I was going in for surgery and called me here on my cell phone. And yes, I, your cell phone that you always have when you're going to pre-op. It's in my purse. Well, I tell you what, then. Why don't you give us the number of the hospital, and we'll call you back at the hospital just to verify you're really in Seattle. That's fine. And, I guess you, I have to give you the nurse's station. And, and how many hours till the surgery? It's two hours uh -huh. till the surgery. If the surgery is at 8 and it's 3 o'clock in Seattle now, that wouldn't add up. Oh, you guys are too sharp. Yeah, yeah of course we're too sharp. Yeah, thank nice. you, Cletus. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Buzz, he uh, responded to your line of questioning right there. <laughs> got him. But, you know, math will always <laughs> ferret them out. That's right. Hello, Donna Meister. Now, this guy got some potential. Okay. I don't know how we'll prove it. The guy says he's calling from a Baltimore City morgue truck. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> now, how do we prove that, though? Uh, you can call my office. Call your office. You can call the office of the chief medical examiner. Listen, do you have any stiffs in the car right now? No, I'm on my way to shock trauma now to get one. Mm. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> oh, so you're actually going to have a stiff in the car pretty soon. In a little while. Oh. You should call us back then. That that yeah. might put was, you over the edge. Enough, it was hard enough getting to you this time. That might put you over, though, if you had a real dead guy in the car. <laughs> that would be a first on this show. That's right. Hey, well, how would you know? I couldn't do anything to him. <laughs> so you're not allowed to touch him, right? Yeah, well, I can touch him, but... Well, well if you can touch like him, that. maybe you can make it make a sound. You know, yeah, maybe you well, could well, like I'll, uh, I'll drop him on the radio so you can hear it, huh? <laughs> or maybe like you just take his hand and slap his face. You know what I mean? Oh, like you take his oh, arm and you go, man, no uh, take his uh, arm uh, and you go, oh, bad boy, bad, uh, uh, bad, uh, uh, bad, uh, bad, uh, bad, uh, bad, bad. God. Yeah, but you you can call the office and verify it, man. Now listen, yeah. you'd, you'd have to have a dead guy there in the car. I'd have to have a dead guy. Yeah, in the I mean, car. The, yeah, and you know something, you know, and one step further, after you get the dead guy in there, we'd have to talk to the dead guy. I'm in the meat wagon, man. Yeah, I'm in the meat wagon. I don't doubt it, Sean, but it's a hard one to verify. Thank you, thank you for trying, though. Oh, just call the office. Okay, no. <laughs> Sorry, Sean. Call me in the office. Hello, Don and Mike, Sean. Now, here's a guy from Reno. Don and Mike. Says he's calling from a DJ booth at a strip club. I'm okay. with my buddies. All right. Hey. Hey, hey. Yeah, I'm calling from a DJ booth at a strip club. I'm the daytime DJ. <laughs> You know, are you one of those DJs that does the uh, the introductions to the ladies? That's right. Oh. <laughs> oh, now, this is a very interesting one. Let very, me... very interesting. How long till you do an intro on your next lovely lady? Oh, we just opened up. I can call a lady the booth if you want. Why don't you uh, do the thing where you introduce her over the microphone? Can you do that? Sure. Okay, let me hear open you do that. Right we'll, we'll listen. 
All right, gentlemen, Fantasy Girls begins its broadcast day in just a couple of minutes. We got the lovely Malaysia taking center stage, get around the brass rail, because she's going to drop that top and you want to be as close as you can possibly get. Get those $20 bills in your mouth and watch what she does with them, guys. I don't know if I believe that. I don't either. I can call her. That wasn't real. That wasn't real credible. Let me call her up to the booth. Let me just say, I'd probably walk out of the strip club if I heard a guy like that. Oh, no, you're, <laughs> you're killing me. And it just doesn't sound, you know, not that we've heard it's, that it's kind of pattern sound, before. It's supposed to sound really cheesy. Yeah, it's supposed to. See, I think right. you tipped your okay. hand right there. It's, it's supposed to sound. Well, goodbye. Supposed to. Yeah, goodbye. supposed to. All right, goodbye. Guy in his basement. <laughs> I let him go. Here's a guy from Folsom, California. He's calling from that uh, famous Folsom prison. Folsom prison uh, blues. Now, how do we know that you're really at the prison? You can call me back. He's with Johnny Cash. <laughs> I got a cool hat when we went out to Sacramento that somebody gave me. This is Folsom Prison. Folsom on it. Prison. Well, I'm sitting here in the exercise yard watching the afternoon line go in. Daryl Nichols and I drove to Folsom one. Oh, evening. for your very romantic evening yeah. together. We ended up in Folsom. <laughs> well, can you put like a bad guy on the phone or something so we know that you're really there? No, I can't put a bad guy on the phone, but I can put my supervisor in. But everybody's out of the shack right now. Can you, uh, Thank like, everybody indoors. can you make a door clank or something like that? Uh, I'm out in a, a, a yard shack out in the center of the yard. There's no uh, steel doors. So you see bad guys over there, though? Yeah. Uh, it, why don't you scream like, around. why don't you... Why don't you scream like, hey, hey, look at me. I'm free as a bird. <laughs> I dare you. Come on. You dare me? Yeah. Hey, look at me. I'm free as a bird. Louder. <laughs> louder. I can't get louder than that, Don. Now are they uh, are they walking around the yard right now? Yeah, they're all going in for the uh, 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 for dinner. Hey, look, look at me. Wouldn't you like to have me tonight? No, I won't do that. They're going in for dinner. That would be awfully at, early at for dinner. Three. We'll see. Well, if, no, they they get locked up uh, in the afternoon about this time. Uh, if Next, if uh, they're come. if they're behind bars, right? Then what are you worried about? Like yelling them, "Hey, I'm free as a bird." Well, because they're standing right out here uh, by me. It's like uh, the first day of uh, the shopping season. Can you yell at them? Toss my salad. Then we're straight. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna say that. Oh. All right. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I don't know about that one either. Goodbye. <laughs> Seems to me that'd be, it'd take no guts if there are a bunch of convicts behind the walls to scream, hey, I'm free as a bird. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's that one time when they wouldn't be behind the walls when you'd have to be walking in the general population that you might be a little concerned about. Uh -huh. Hey, wasn't that that, uh, that screw that shouted at us from the, uh, from the cage? That screw. The screw. All right, listen, here's a lady that says she's a dominatrix and she has a client with her right ah, now. Ah, excellent. Oh. Hello, is this Joan. Yes, this is Joan. Hello, Joan, the dominatrix. Hello. Hi, so you got a guy there right now? Yes, I do. He's actually in the room getting ready. How is he getting ready, Joan? Um, actually, I'm making him put on a dog collar, and um, he'll probably just be in his boxer shorts. Mm -hmm. Now, does this guy have a problem with you calling a radio show while you're about to dominate him? Um, well, he better not, you know. I'll just flog him. Are you a real dominatrix or are we being scammed here? I swear to God. Well, you have to make noise. You have to make a, like, crack your whip. Crack my whip. Let's see. Let me go in here and get it. So why don't they ever have their whips in their hands? Uh-huh. <laughs> you would think they would, Mike. Today's yeah. modern dominatrix. It's in the closet. You know, I have to get it. It's in my car. Did you, you hear that? No. Do it again. Okay, hold on. That's not like you were stomping your foot. Yeah. I swear to God. Uh-huh. No, I don't believe you, lady. <laughs> Yeah, you're an awful dominant. You're not a dominant. You're a bad liar, too. Here's a guy from California who says he's can't, standing in cow crap. <laughs> Don and Mike, how you doing? This is John, everybody, from Linden, California. That's right. To clean out my truck. Getting ready to clean out your truck. What, you just pulled up and back a uh, cow crap? No. <laughs> I haul cows for a living, and I'm at our yard right now getting ready to clean it out. I just got done hauling a load, and it's hauling cow. 27-foot-long <laughs> truck box full of cow crap. <laughs> oh, so the whole truck, the the, back, the flatbed, or I mean the uh, the tractor trailer it's, has cow crap yeah, all, out, all over it? the kind you see with all the holes in the sides. Do you have, uh, like, big gloves on and stuff? Do I have what? Big gloves on? No, no gloves on. No gloves. Rubber boots, that's all I got. Rubber well, boots we're going to have to prove it. Let's talk to the cow crap. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna have to hear I can, you. I could turn the big hose on that I squirted out with. That's I'm gonna have to hear. I would have to hear you like stomp around in the cow crap a little bit. Stomp around. Let's see if you could hear it. No, but I mean really stomp around. <laughs> it's already going up over my leg. Can you hear it sloshing around? <laughs> 
I can practically smell it. <laughs> it does stink in here. You want me to turn the big hose on? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. This guy could just be standing in the middle of an empty room, though. Absolutely. I don't. I don't like hear the slosh, slosh, sloshing of of cow poop. Right. So there, that's about as sloppy as it's. It's kind of thick. Well, you might as well turn the hose on it. Okay, let me turn the hose on. Turn the pump on. <laughs> it's louder than a garden hose. Yeah, that's. Hose? Yeah, that's not bad. Not that's bad. Not bad. So, yeah. I gotta let, let me you jump go, out here a minute. Jump. Nah, I gotta let him go. I'm yeah, not sorry. thick enough. Even if he really was, it's just not. You know, he's in the back of a truck and there been cows pooping in there. Right, now here's a lady in Baltimore. Says so she has a dead guy in her car. Oh dear. In her <laughs> car? Yes. Hey, Teresa, yes. how is it you have a dead guy in your car? Well, we just picked one up from the morgue, and we're going to pick another one up at another morgue. And are on the way there right now. I actually tried to call you from while we're outside the morgue. Hello. The There's a dead man right there. <laughs> yeah, taking him to the airport again. <laughs> hello. It's Ken Stevens. Hello. Yes. Yes, hello. So you, were you driving a hearse? Actually, we're in a, we're in a van. Hello. It's a conspicuous and dignified white van. How, how many dead guys can you get in there? Um, we've got We've got the capability of two right now, but could fit four. If you needed to. Uh, and what type of business are you in that you'd be hauling around dead guys? That is that is our business. That's what we do. We have our own business, and all we do is transport people from where they die to whatever funeral home we take them okay, to. Okay, so whatever you're actually going to a, to a funeral home. Uh -huh. Yes. Well, you'd have to do the thing where, like, you uh, get you grab the dead guy's arm and, like, get him to slap himself in the face or something. I, I mean, that's the only verification I could think of. Well, and it, you know, it wouldn't matter to the dead guy because he's dead and his family wouldn't know because you won't mention the name of the dead guy. I have the death certificate. I could read you what he died from. No. Uh, no. No. Um, you no. Just, no. Le, sorry. No. no. You know, that's oogie. Sorry. That's, it's one thing. You know, when the guy called from the city, you know, the guy, it was it was a little different. I would like the, the county coroner, it just weirded me out when that, that lady was saying, you know, mm -hmm. that just creeps me out, man. I would be all for, like, picking up the dead guy's hand and making him slap himself in the face and stuff. At least I could hear that. Right? But like a death certificate, you could read that anywhere. You could doctor death certificate. <laughs> Hello, Donna Mike. Hello. Hello. Are you talking to me? Yeah. I have to be really quiet. I snuck into the bathroom. I thought this was a guy for a second. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Is this a yeah. guy? No, it says it's Leanne. Yes. My I hope my I turn the radio off. This is Lee. Excuse me? <laughs> this is Lee. <laughs> Lee, last name Ann. <laughs> no, my name is Leanne. Right, Leanne. Okay. okay. What are you doing, Leah? Yeah, where are you I'm, calling us from? My bathtub. I turned the radio off in the kitchen so my husband wouldn't hear us. Okay, now, Leanne, see, normally we love girls calling us from bathtub, but for this segment... I have my sex toy with me. Well, hello. <laughs> Welcome back into the contest. <laughs> I would have to, you'd have to run the sex toy, though, under the water. Like, you know well, what I mean? I don't think you can submerge it all the way because it might short out. Is it electric? Well, it's a battery. Battery. Well, could you put it in so, like, at least we could hear... It? Like the the propellers going around the in the water. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. You hear it? Put it down to the phone. They put it put it down by the water now. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it in the water. Hang on. I don't want to get the phone wet. Okay. Oh, you can hear it. <laughs> you can hear it. I hope my husband didn't turn the radio back right, now, on. Now, hey, Leanne, what are you doing up there, honey? I'm trying to break can the Can you now. can you use it? Um, I, I probably have to use a little soap. Okay. Do you want me to do mm. that? Yes, sure. Yes, absolutely. I'm getting this phone covered with soap from my hair. Oh, it's fine. It won't hurt. All right. Her. Hang on one second. All right. Oh, shoot. This is Leanne in her tub with her friend. For their toy. And meanwhile... Kids need to get in here. Her husband is downstairs, <laughs> like, eating his peas. <laughs> you know, oblivious to the fact. Great <laughs> dinner, honey. He's watching Wheel of Fortune. Four million people are listening to his wife right now in the tub with her toy. If he sees the phone in the kitchen, if the light is lit up. And Leanne, who's the celebrity you think you most resemble? Oh, maybe a little bit of Nev Campbell. A little bit of Nev Campbell? Yeah. Really? What little bit? Um, I'm not as big busted as she is. That's okay. Mm. My husband is going to hear this. The kids keep running back and forth. Just from your voice, you sound like that girl on the Drew Carey show. Mimi? Yeah. Large, big-boned woman. 
My kids are trying to get in the bathroom. Oh, oh you're ruining it for me now. <laughs> Your kids. I'm sorry. I had to hang up on her. Kids are... Mommy. Mom. Mom. Come on. All right. Listen, <laughs> as of right now, uh -huh. this girl, Carrie, who's naked in her boss's chair. Yeah, there's something about Carrie we liked. She still is the upfront leader. That's right. So far, nobody's thick enough. When we come back, we'll have one more round, and then we'll select a winner. This is the Don and Mike Show. It was an estimated completion date of January 1995. The rest no, of no. So the, uh, the plan, if I may, was to complete Hank's Look Around Cafe on August 23rd, this year. That's right, my birthday. Can't move my birthday back. What else does my jackass business manager have to say? Mr. Kingsley, restaurants rotate when they are at the top of buildings. Your place is at street level. There is no view. He does not get it. You see, the point is, it's not the view. The point is, when you eat at Hank's, you and your food are going on an adventure. Maybe you should just forget the rotating floor and get the place going. Forget the rotating floor. Come on, take a mess. Come on. Come on, come on. Well, sir, thank you. But I am a visionary, so I'd like you to take your opinion and shove it right up your ass. Regards, Hank Kingsley. Fax that back to him. But he's saying you don't have enough money to make it rotate. Fine. Then I will get investors. If it so happens, I am on a uh, first name basis with some of the most influential, some of the most powerful people in this business. So, get Chuck Woolery on the phone. The Don and Mike Show. Filling your radio with their intoxicating aroma, Don Geronimo and Michael Mara. Final round here of where are you? Yeah. Let's start with Greg. Hey, buddy. In Pennsylvania. Hey, Bobby. Hey, what's up? Now, Greg, it says here that you're calling us from the top of a ski slope. I am. Yeah, that could be pretty interesting if you skied down the mountain while you call. I'll give it a shot. I'm a, let's say, novice skier. Uh, all the better. Okay, is... look, face it, I'm a pussy, but I'm going to give it a shot. Listen, I can relate to this. <laughs> I uh, I just tore my MCL when I was skiing a couple of weeks ago. What is the uh, what's the name of the ski resort you're it's, at? It's uh, Whitetail. I'm maybe one of your sponsors. We, uh, uh, we actually did, uh, we did that same thing where we were miked. And and skied, right? Yeah, that is before I skied. You actually skied down the hill with a live microphone. I just rode up in the lift and rode back down. It's so exhilarating, but there's a lot more pressure when you're uh, doing it live. I guess that's what you... But the thing is, I had a microphone that was clipped onto my... Uh, my One of those my, little... My snow pants. <laughs> One of those little lavalier microphones is what you have, right? That's well, right. I don't have the, uh, the, the look my no hands mic. I'm holding it. So he's holding it. He's a novice skier. I love this. All right, what is the uh, what is the slope you're on, and what is the uh, the level? I mean, is it a well, green, a blue? No, it's definitely a green. Mm -hmm. It's the greenest of greens. So it's the bunny slope. It's, it is. All right, well then there should be no problem. Uh, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> if you're no confused, just ask them. All right. And, and now if I tear my uh, ACL or whatever, I can go find the hot tub, right? Yeah, don't go in the hot tub. That's nope. the mistake I made. That blew your knee up, right? Okay. Yeah, the doctor said that's the worst. You want to ice your knee immediately. Yeah, the first thing to do when it hurts is to ice the area. Okay, ready? Go ahead, Greg. Let's right. hear your ski. Here we go. Now, mind you, the conditions aren't that great, and there's not a whole lot of people around. I would say imagine hi. Can you say hi? It's going to be raining. Can you hear that? All right, here we go. You know, we haven't had a lot of snow. It's probably very icy hi, up there. Hi. Mm. Why don't you hold the phone down by hey. your skis and talk to us? <laughs> What do you want me to do? Hold the phone down by your skis and still talk to us. Just okay. talk louder. Okay. That's a pretty good suggestion. <laughs> it sure sounds like he's skiing. Yeah. Something credible about him, too. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Uh, <laughs> Greg? Yeah, I'm here. Did, did you did you make it to the bottom of the no, slope? No, yet. Not hey, yet. I'm still on my feet. Still on your feet. Oh! 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 
<laughs> and the house is getting bigger at the bottom. God. You know how to stop? Make the pe- you know, make a pizza. Yeah. Make I, a piece of pizza. Yeah, I've seen this on the White World of Sports. I gotta stop. That's how I stop. Have you had some lessons? Yeah. Hey, I made it. Make a piece of pizza. I made it. Well, they told you that? Yeah. I made make it. a piece of pizza. That's like you tell a three year old kid. I know. Uh, that's exactly. I've never heard you say that. But that's that. what I think when I stop on the skis. Make a piece of pizza. Make a piece of pizza. You know, you want to go together. Right. Sure, it's no plow. Right, snow plow. Yeah, that's the professional term, Mike. Right? <laughs> yeah, you know, like that make a piece of pizza. Yeah, that's right. That's the that's the peekaboo, peekaboo street version. Snow plow. Uh, Greg, did you stop? I'm here. I'm done. That's pretty successful. That's a pretty tough one to beat. Now, listen, what station are you listening to the show on right now? Uh, I'm not. It's like 1490, and uh, hey, is it it's here? Where's my sheet? Hold on a second. <laughs> What station would that be? Hey, Greg, is it raining up uh, there? Hold on. It's been raining all day. I got him. He's in Shamokin, Pennsylvania. Uh-huh. That would be the station. Sure. Or no, hold on. You know what? I bet it's... I bet he's listening in Hager's. Hager's no, probably closer, yeah, probably. Yeah, that's that's it. W-A-R-K. I was a big pussy. I had to go out to my car and lay down. All right. Uh, hold on, Greg. I'll tell you right now. That's pretty good. That guy's in first place. Skiing down a bunny slope. <laughs> I like that. I like that That guy's in first place. That's Greg on the ski slope. All right. Here's a guy from Idaho who says yeah, he's, a, he's a private investigator. He's a private dick, <laughs> and he's on assignment right now following some guy. That's right. Is that mm. true? Yeah, it is. Well, how would we verify that? Well... Been here for eight hours, sitting in my car. Boy, an eight hours stakeout. Who are you following, and why? I mean, don't give me the name, but what is the uh, nature of the case you're on? Well, I wish I could say that it was something juicy, but most of what we do is all insurance work, and. Mm. So you're trying to find somebody who's uh, actually out, uh, you know, doing jumping jacks when he's got a disability claim? Yeah, you've seen that kind of stuff on 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, guys working on the roof when he's not supposed to be. And... <laughs> That guy, the old guy. <laughs> hey, it's me. Where's that money you owe me, you son of a bitch? Hi, this is Jim Rockford. Hi. This is Donnell Valentine. <laughs> You're about to get your ass kicked to the state line, and I'm wearing the boots, so they're going to do it. All right, listen, uh, cousin Private Dick, I'm sorry. You're out of the, co- you're out of the competition. Uh, yeah, just too boring. I mean, you know, what, what, what can he do? He didn't ski. He didn't make it. Now, Carrie. Yes. It's, it's down to a two-person competition. It's either mm-hmm. Carrie, who's been naked in her boss's chair for the last hour, or this guy, Greg. And i got to be honest, Carrie, I love the fact that you've been naked in your boss's chair for almost an hour. Mm-hmm. But that's a tough one to beat, the, the guy that actually skied down a mountain while he was calling us. Yeah, it calls for uh, creativity on your part, Carrie. I mean, how do you think you could top that? Well, let's see. Now I'm wearing his jacket, my boss's jacket. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting here with my bottle of lotion that I carry for my hands. And I just slowly, you know, you know, lotion myself down because I thought I was dry, you know. Mm. Wow. Well, you know, we all kind of just stopped and looked at each other. Just to well, to you know what? On any other day, Carrie, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you'd you'd be the winner. Hey, on, you know on, what? He on, did good. I will give it to the gentleman that won. On any other day. Well, then then you're a good sport. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Carrie. And Carrie, you certainly intrigued us more. Tell him congratulations, and he deserves it. I wonder if this girl was ever really even naked or not. <laughs> we'll never know. Yeah. You know, we can only go on the honor system here. Oh, uh, well, I'm a very honest person, so yes, I was. <laughs> All right. Well, Carrie, thank you. And you have a good evening, gentlemen. You, you, you stop by anytime. Okay. Carrie. Keep in yeah. touch. Yeah. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. Don't be a stranger. Well, listen, Greg. Hey, oh, my Peter. Greg, oh, my Peter, you're the big wiener, Greg. Hey, there you go. You hey. were maybe, maybe if Carrie was sitting on the ski lift here with me naked. That'd be cool. Hey. Now, listen, Greg, here's what you want. A $250 gift certificate to the Potomac Mills Mall. Oh, yeah. Three free months of AOL, courtesy of America Online, the world's most popular Internet online service. Yes. AOL, so easy to use, no wonder it's... Number one. Number one. And Potomac Mills, with more than 220 value outlet stores, have you been to Potomac Mills lately? So at 250 bucks, you go buy yourself some nice stuff, okay? I'm going to buy myself some uh, heating pad or something, and I'm going to be sore. <laughs> Beautiful. Greg, you are the big, fat wiener, and thank you for listening to the show. Thank you, Donna Mike. You're See? the best. Thanks. 
That's, That's cool. I like that. And you know, when he put the phone down by the skis, it really sounded like he was skiing in the rain. It ended up being a very successful contest, yeah, I thought. Yeah, That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Started out kind of lame at the end. Mm-hmm. Kind of livened up when we got the guy called us from the morgue truck. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's still okay with me. Anytime somebody wants to call, you got a couple of stiffs in the back, you just go back there with a cell phone and get the people to go, you bad boy. <laughs> Oh, oh, I'll give you a prize. <laughs> I really would. <laughs> I know you would. Okay. You bet. Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> Do you enjoy that? I enjoyed it very much. This is Larry King, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's Mike the TV boy making his first appearance of 19 and 99. Hi, Larry. Hi. You know, Mike is the uh, guy that sits around and tapes TV shows all day and then plays us back tapes. How, how's Mike doing? Yeah. Yeah? Is he doing okay? Yeah. Yeah. You find Mike funny, don't you, Larry? No. <laughs> oh, you don't. Oh, wow. You don't. I didn't know that. Well, he, but he, he created you. Yeah. Do you enjoy that? Well, now, we enjoy the calls of Mike the TV boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Larry, you look like a frog. Why? <laughs> take, <laughs> take a look at yourself. <laughs> don't use that word around me. Don't use what word? Frog? No. Yeah. Oh, you don't like to be called a frog, huh? No. <laughs> Larry is a frog. Larry is a frog. No. Larry's a big hairy frog. Thank you all very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you get used to it after a while, Larry. I don't know. What was the question? Could you repeat the question, please? Fantastic. <laughs> it's the greatest. It requires no explanation, Laura. Uh, <laughs> Lawrence. <laughs> Lawrence. <laughs> Have you ever experienced it yourself? No, no, <laughs> really. I'm I'm amazed at that because have you ever given oral sex? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, so. Don claims you're pretty good at it. Yeah, well, that's my theory about how you get so many good-looking women to go out with you is that you're you're good with your mouth. And then we read an article where someone called you Larry the Lip. <laughs> yeah, thought that would make him laugh. What's it like? Uh, it's going to happen to me in 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 a few months. What was that? What was that, Larry? I'm sorry. What's it like? Uh, it's going to happen to me in 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 a few months. It's going to happen. He, I guess he's going to get or is that right, Larry? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you looking forward to it? Yeah. <laughs> That's a bad. Boy, Larry, you do seem to be a little obsessed about it, aren't you? Yeah. It is about sex, isn't it? Yes, it's about... No, you can't fake it. You can't no. fake it. No, Larry, you can't fake it. And what are you talking about here? Are you talking about regular sex or oral sex? Oral sex. <laughs> oral sex. <laughs> <laughs> now he's laughing with us. Larry is laughing along with us. <laughs> All right, well, listen, Larry, anything else? No. Yeah? What, what would that be, uh, Lawrence? Um. What? What? Um. Oh, what? Come on, Larry, get to the point. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great weekend. <laughs> All right, we will too. Uh, More for us, Larry, so we know you know what you're talking about. Why? Come on, because we want to hear it, Larry. Because it turns it turns us on. Please, just say it, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Goodbye, Larry. Yeah. yeah. Thank Goodbye. you all very much. <laughs> all right. Goodbye. 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 Turn your radio down. Hello there, Don and Hello Mike. Hello there, Don and Mike. Turn this on, please. You turn, yes, turn your radio down. Hello, Don and Mike. Yes, sir. The radio God. That's hey. Wally Rats. you. Hey, Hello. Hello. Listen, I got a 10-gauge cannon. I'm going to set it off for you if you All in. right. You have a 10-gauge cannon. Yes, sir. That's great. Does that make a big boom? Oh, big boom. Where are you calling from, sir? I'm in Pine Grove, out of Sacramento, up in the mountains. All right, go ahead. Fire your cannon off. Hang please. on. It just Let me load it. I fired my 10-gauge cannon this morning. First thing. Did you call your wife to look at her again? <laughs> no, not again. Doesn't allow me to do that anymore, Don. <laughs> okay, you guys tell me when you're ready. Oh, we're ready, Let sir. Let me set the phone down first. We're ready. Go ahead. Those of you in Reno may want to take cover. But did you hear that? Yeah, do it again. Oh, I got to go get another load. All right, don't pull a Murphy, though, now. 
Watch right, your hands. Yeah. Shoot another load off. All right, hang on. Let me get another load. Hold tight. Okay, get another load. <laughs> He's getting a, another load. Christine just wrote on the screen, this weirdo calls almost every day. He always wants to fire his cannon for us. It didn't sound that good. It sounded like a door slamming or yeah. something like that. You only had to go get another load. Did you fire your 10-gauge uh, cannon this morning uh, on time, regularly, as uh, regular as rain? Uh, yeah, it was a BB gun, Mike. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know that. Sometimes a BB gun. Yeah. Sometimes a BB gun can be uh, more fun than a cannon. It was a BB gun. Oh, be I had a lot of water this morning. Mm -hmm. Kind of loosened everything up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although, over the weekend, lots of 10-gauge cannons. I had a couple on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. It's quite a struggle for me to fire the cannon on Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> then we had waffles. <laughs> That'll do it. Are you still there? Yes, now listen, is this really a cannon? Yes, it's 10 gauge cannons put out by Remington. It's a starter cannon for uh, yacht races and stuff like that. Okay. Now you uh, pack it with what kind of load? Oh, I don't pack it, I buy the loads. You buy the load. What's in the Gage. load? What's in the load? Geesh? No, oh, no, they're blanks. Oh, they're blanks. Now, yeah. can you can you put the phone somewhere where we can hear that a little better? It just uh... I'll lay it right beside the cannon. Okay. All right, good. Listen, if the phone blows up. Right. Uh, give us a countdown here, like three, two, one. Donna, Mike, I'm going to light the cannon now. All right, hang All right. on. All right. Well, here we go. Three, two, no. uh, one. Donna and Mike. They saw him right. That was better. That was better. That was better. He paused a little bit, but with him talking on the, on the phone. Yeah. Okay, now listen. One more time, but here's what I want you to do. Set the phone down. Don't talk into the phone. You know, hang up. The only phone we want to hear is the phone down next to the cannon, and you have to yell. Okay, that's the only three... phone I got on. Well, no, no, listen. Take the telephone. When you uh -huh. load the cannon, put the phone down by the nozzle. Well, you know what I mean. The end of the cannon. Where the you barrel. Put... The barrel. Thank you, Mike. The barrel. The nozzle. <laughs> Put, you said nozzle. Put the phone down by the barrel. Then okay. walk back towards the end where you light the fuse. I don't light it. It's a puller. All right, you pull it. You're going to pull right. it, but but keep the... We don't want to hear you talking into the phone and then putting it down. We want to hear you do the three count away from the phone. All right. All right, Hang so on. you can really get far away from... All right. All right, I will. Okay, here we go. Big excitement now. Get another load in there. All right, down in mind. My cannon. Got him on. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. Three, two, one. Got him on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hear the reverberation like off the metal or whatever's down there. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. You can be a regular caller. Call, her to call tomorrow with that. Uh, you like that cannon? Oh, eh? I love that cannon. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Uh, thank you, guys. Hey. It's a. Uh, I appreciate talking to you. Okay, well, call us tomorrow. Great fire, show. fire your cannon off tomorrow for us. All right. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <Bye -bye. laughs> cannon boy. That's a good caller. Cannons are fun. <laughs> Hello, Donna Mike Show. Donna Mike. Yeah. Hey, um, I just came back from the doctor's office, and I'm going to tell you what they told me I have. Is this the guy that always calls and says he has hemorrhoids? No, I'm a first-time caller from uh, St. Pete. I have an anal abscess, which is mm. a fistula. Mm. Does that it's... make sense to you? You have an anal abscess, which is is what? It's called a fistula. A fistula. <laughs> There's an aptly named uh, ailment. How would you uh, get that? I don't know. I just uh, I had uh, you know signs in my uh, when I was going my bowel movements, and uh, he had what? When he you had signs when he was doing his bowel movements. He was getting some of those oh. holiday colors you mentioned earlier. Yeah. I, I thought he said yeah. signs in my domino myth. <laughs> I don't understand the thing he was this guy saying. So he's having trouble with his ten gauge. Right. Right. So they told me what my uh, problem was, is I have to have a minor surgery. It's called an anal abscess. You have to have minor surgery? Yeah, I have to have a day, day surgery. You, uh, sound rather, you sound rather perky for someone who I would imagine would be in a great deal of pain. No, I'm not in pain at all. That's what they said, and they kept asking me that. They probably think that I had it at a younger age and didn't know it. So I don't have no pain at all. It's irritating, but there's no pain. Mm -hmm. Really? Uh, do you like uh, cranberry juice? <laughs> no. How did you first discover this? Well, when I go to the Dare I ask. See, what happened is I quit drinking and I started taking Vimes because I didn't know how to sleep. I just passed out every night. So, uh, and then after I started taking Vimes, I noticed that I was having a... Uh, what did you start taking? Vimes. Vimes. 
Valiums. 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 And that's, you know, advice for anybody that quits <laughs> drinking. Go right to the prescription narcotics. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, as soon as I started taking that, I noticed that I have this, uh, holiday flavor in my bowel movement. Oh, my <laughs> <Hi-o. laughs> <Hi-o. laughs> <Hi-o. laughs> Oh, it must have been very frightening. It was. I was kind of upset. You know, I'm just figured I'd call because you just had a... Uh, Mr. Well, no, he got the uh, deeper end of the problem, but, uh... <laughs> yeah, he must didn't have a fistula. Mine was the gut, not the butt. Yours yours is a different problem. Yeah. Yeah, you, have you heard it before, Buzz? But, I mean, is it is it something serious, would you think? Well, I know what an abscess is. I think you'll be all right. Yeah? You know, yeah. you'll be okay. You know, a fistula is serious, serious though. A lot more serious than another problem, a fingula. <laughs> <laughs> or a handula. <laughs> An armula. An armula. You have big trust. Or a bowling and if you have a, <laughs> In the armula. If you have a light bulbula, they'll get you right into emergency surgery. All right, listen, good luck to you. Uh, thank you, sir. All right, bye-bye. All right. Good luck. Bye-bye. I thought that was like a joke, a fistula. I thought that was that's a real name for an abscess. Really, a yeah. fistula. hi oh hi old fistula. Ed had so many of those. Oh, great one. Oh, I have a fistula, great one. Hi, <laughs> oh, Ed. Ed, oh, will you please oh. lance my fistula? Oh, instantly, great one. Oh. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. It's just a job, really, you know, something to keep me moving. My real passion is my hobby. Really? What's that? I work with retards. Isn't that a little politically, um, incorrect? No. The hell with that. No one's going to tell me who I can and can't work with, right? No, I mean... We got this one kid, Mongo. He's got a forehead like a drive-in movie theater, but he's a good sh- so he don't bust the chops too much. So one day, Mongo gets out of his cage but and... they keep him in a cage? Well, it's, it's just an enclosure. No, but they keep him confined. Right, yeah. That's bullshit. Well, that's what I said. So I went out and I got him. Uh, I got him a leash. A leash. Yeah, one of those ones you can hook onto the clothesline, and he can run back and forth. And uh, there's plenty of room for him to to dig and uh, play. That kid is really uh, he's really blossomed. The Don and Mike Show. Are they strong? Listen, bud. They've got radioactive blood. Don Geronimo and Michael Mara. This is Ghetto-licious. Yeah! I've got to tell you, the, one other thing from the weekend. Yes. I already mentioned that we had a poker game Saturday at my house. Mm-hmm. It was great. We all had a good time. We did. We all bust balls. Mm-hmm. We all laugh. Mm-hmm. It's just six guys getting together, being men. Right. Men, 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 men. We are men. Now, because I wanted this day to be perfect, mm-hmm. perfect, mm-hmm. I knew a fire would be a, a fantastic touch because it was kind of uh, cold and, and gray and misty mm-hmm. and gray. Right. So the boys are coming over at 12 noon. <laughs> Here's exactly what I did, and now we have we have pinpointed my mistake. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, this makes sense. 10 o'clock in the morning. I am free to come downstairs. Open the flue. Good. In the in the fireplace. She puts her head in. She goes. It's open. Great. 10 a.m. We get a fire going. Perfect. All I got to do now, when the boys come over, mm-hmm. I just keep adding logs. Mm-hmm. Sure. Right? right? So. You're nice and toasty in the poker parlor. So it's 1030, and by now, I got a, I got a beautiful, a picture-perfect fire going. Right. Down in the basement. 11 o'clock, take a shower. 1130, mm-hmm. setting out the ashtrays. I'm getting the cigars ready. I got the little mini refrigerator stocked with the kind of beer you like and Everything. the kind of beer the junkies like. I got regular Pepsi for Buzz. I got Diet Pepsi for, for everybody else. I mean, I got I got it going on. I'm totally prepared. Yep. 11.30, half hour till game time. <laughs> then I say, you know what? I need to add another log, a big log. And what I do is I go out back and I get not a little log. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get... A Lincoln log. <laughs> right. A big ass log. I right. mean, I got, log. I got a huge, like a tree stump is what I get. Mm-hmm. So, I bring it in, and I go, you know what? Before I add that to the fire, I'm going to put another one of those little fire starter logs on. Did, I didn't know. See, that oh. I did not know. I didn't know that you threw that in there. So, even though the fire was going, and it, it would have probably caught the log on fire. Well, but I didn't know if it would or not, so I added. Now, not one of those 
big fire starter log, just one of the... A little pocket, a little stick of fuel. A little mini one, like right. the size of a candy bar. But still, as I found out later, mm -hmm. still very volatile. Very mm -hmm. powerful. Very powerful, all of those items. Yes, what they, they have is they have fluid in them. They have, you know, liquid that burns. Mm -hmm. That's why they, they go so good. So, I put in the the extra little thing to make more fire. Right. And now there's just the, the logs that my wife and I have already put in, they're nearly down to nothing. Okay. I go, beautiful. I get out this big stump. I go... Put it in, kind of roll it in, right? Standing there, just admiring my work. Mm -hmm. so I really, I fold my arms like this, and I go, ha, "I'm the man. <laughs> I am the friggin' man. I got my buddies coming over to play cards. Mm -hmm. I got it going on." <laughs> and all of a sudden, I notice that there is smoke that is just billowing out of the front of the fireplace. <laughs> I mean. Worse than the last time. Just billowing out. So the first thing I do, because I don't want to get in trouble with my wife, first thing I do is I run outside. And now it's cloudy, so I can't tell if the smoke's coming out of the chimney or not, right? right. Keep in mind, she opened the flu. Right. So you think everything's cool. Flu was open. Right. Now I'm standing there going, well, it must be because I put the big log on and maybe the, the, the start of fire log, maybe that kind of broke and it's just caused a bigger fire. There's too much fire for the fireplace. So what I do is I think, well, I'll go in the other room and get, we got one of those big fans. Mm -hmm. Then I go in the other room, get the fan, I'll plug it in. By this time, there's just a little smoke in the room. Mm -hmm. I go in the basement, I get the fan, I come back. You cannot see the track lighting in the ceiling. Oh, dear. Because the, the smoke <laughs> is so thick. <laughs> and while I'm standing there flipping out about this, it's exactly at that moment that right. all over the house I start hearing, <laughs> Every smoke alarm in the house has gone off now. Later on, I asked him, I said, uh, how come your smoke, smoke detectors aren't going off because you've disabled all of them because they were all screaming at you, right? Everyone. Yeah, I know that our smoke, smoke detectors work. So they're going off all over the house. The dogs are barking. I go upstairs. My kid is studying his schoolwork. My wife is on the computer. I go upstairs and I go... It's happened again! It's happened again! Smoke pouring into the She house. goes, what? I said, I don't know. I was flabbergasted. I said, you opened the flu. I started the fire. It was a great fire, honey. It was a fabulous fire. I just put a log on, and now smoke everywhere. She goes, settle down. It can't be that bad. Right. Settle down. Don't worry about it. I'm positive. We checked it out. No problem. She comes down there. <laughs> and I mean, not an exaggeration. <laughs> That the smoke is absolutely black, mm -hmm. and as what, what's that? About two feet. I'm holding my hand with them, yeah. like that on the ceiling. Just two feet of smoke. Cool. My son, thick, thick black smoke. Mm -hmm. My son falls down to the ground mm -hmm. and crawls out of the room. The smart boy. Right? This is how bad it is. Yeah. Now it's precisely at this time. Frida says, "What did you do?" I said, "Honey, I put a log in." It's right at this time I hear. Buzz is here. <laughs> 20 minutes early. Yeah. Buzz Burbank. Hi. So he I, wins the punctuality award, but we all compete for that. I said to Bart, go get Buzz. Whatever you do, don't bring him down here. Right? Because mm -hmm. I'm still water pail that she goes out and she waters her flowers with. She had it full, though. And it's like from Pee Wee's Playhouse because it's real big and it's got a million holes coming out of the head like a shower head. Right. Go away. Mr. Fire. So she comes down and she goes, you open the doors? I go, yes, look, smoke is billowing out. This is when I cringed because I knew it was going to happen yeah. when she did this. Yeah. She starts pouring the water on the fire. And now, worse than the smoke. This is uh, steam and smoke. Well, it is smoke mostly. It's, mm -hmm. it's unbelievable. So now everybody is like coughing and everybody's standing outside and we cannot see. When she put the water on, although she had to do it, mm -hmm. this is when it became unbelievable. I mean, this is yeah. when you wanted to get out of the room because we were dealing with a health problem there. So at this point, everybody goes upstairs mm -hmm. and me and Frida go downstairs. Right. Because now the fire is out. Now what we got to do is get the crap out of the fireplace and try to start ventilating the basement. Mm -hmm. She goes over with these big like tongs that we have, these big like metal tongs that you use to take the, right. the wood out of the fireplace. Mm -hmm. She goes over, very expertly, picks up the piece, the, the huge tree stump that I put in there. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, because, you know, I see her arms shaking like this. Cause she's she like to maneuver that. She's a girl, mm -hmm. right? I'm much stronger than she is. Right. Mm -hmm. I am, guys. So <laughs> she goes, uh, she gets into the back porch, 
Ah, she puts it down. I said, honey, this is man's work. Right. Let me take the rest of the stuff out of there. Mm -hmm. Give me those tongs. Uh, yee. She gives me the tongs. I go over. Now, all that's left in there, a couple little pieces of the, uh, the other fire. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the massive fake thing. I mean, the thing that's like the size of the candy bar. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I do is, the, the thing, the fire starter thing. <laughs> I go in with the tongs, and I very gingerly pick this thing up. And as I start walking toward movies, because we... Yeah, it actually get, you know, gets inside your clothes. You don't know it. And, you know, what's the best thing to do after you've got a uh, smoke-filled room? Then you bring the cigars out and light the cigars out. So, you've got so the... we were all smoking cigars out of the six, uh, six of us. Five of us were smoking cigars, so it was like right. the room was emptying out of all of the smoke that had been mm -hmm. in the chimney, but, but now it was being filled up with the smoke from the cigars. <laughs> a lot of people normally have to go a good three, four years to get that many carcinogens, and I think we, uh, we managed to do it in one afternoon. So we had a... Great game of cards. We already told you about that. I was lucky enough to be the big winner. We had lots of fun. Everybody goofed on everybody. Right. About 4.15, my wife came downstairs, and she says, listen, you know, we're going to go see the Star Trek movie. I mean, you know, our family's going right. to go, so right. everybody had to, to, to split. Mm -hmm. Was I your buddy on that, incidentally? Did I? Did I? Was I the good wrangler when I was leaving as far as motivating Absolutely. everybody to get going? Absolutely. I, I just knew that you, you said something like the movie time was the 4.40 or something, some early time like that. So I'm like, oh, come on, little doggies. Let's get going. Everybody out right now. You're fantastic. And you did it much meaner than that. You said, yep. Eric. Time to leave. John, go. Buzz, see you later. Let's go. Let's Come on, go. let's get out of here. These people have a movie to see. Well, you know, we've been in your home for over four hours, right. and that, your wife, very nice, very understanding, and then that's, it was time to go. So we go to the movies. We come back home. Last, no, not last night, Saturday night. Mm -hmm. She says, go down and clean up the mess. So I go down, and she says, hold on, before you clean up the mess, let's figure out what happened. Yeah, because, I mean, it was hard to... You couldn't examine what the flu situation was because it was so hot. You right. couldn't go near it. And the smoke, you just couldn't take care of that. The flames were gigantic. The uh, the fireplace was about a million degrees again. It was unbelievable that heat. Finally, we figured it out. When everything was fine, when my wife opened the flu and we made the first fire, when I went and put the little log on, right. no problem there. Then when I took the giant stump and kind of... Rolled it on top of the existing fire. Mm -hmm. When I kind of rolled it on, on its way in, it hit the flu. Oh, the flu which, handle. Oh, my Which God. hangs down in the air, that right? Makes sense. right? That makes sense. Sure. Because they're on a very precarious little hook system. So mm -hmm. that thing is hanging down. Like, you know, if you look in the back of somebody's throat. Like a pallet. Yeah, like right. that little thing in the back of your throat. Right. Like that thing's hanging down. I just tossed the log in, and when I did that, it hit that part of the flu, which... Mm -hmm. Went and closed up, right. which is why all of a sudden, billowing smoke throughout the house. You were about eight feet away from the fireplace when you decided to throw the, put the log in, right? Yeah, I wasn't real close. <laughs> you strong. I made a little bit of a sporting event. <laughs> and, it, and it shut the flu, and then you're yeah, in that was, same situation. The flu was closed, and then the uh, house was full of smoke. And It's like trying to get the ball in the clown's mouth at the end of miniature golf. That's the way you threw that log into the fire. <laughs> I can make it from right here. It's all yours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Done. Problem solved. Well, you know what you need so to do. So it was very, very embarrassing. You know, it was very embarrassing because all of this was happening right as everybody was coming over for the big poker game, Jesus well, Christ. Well, you looked a little freaked out and said, we got a flu problem. I was just relieved that there wasn't, uh, you know, a lot of illness in the house when I got there. That and you're was... right. You're the one guy. Mm -hmm. Buzz. I don't care if he sees me like that. Rob, I don't care. Right. Johnny Cakes, EB. Came out like he was Bring it on. Stop but it. I, I said, oh, my God. This fr I swore, yes, for this person, I said, we got to get this cleaned up before Mike gets here. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, you know, I don't know why I feel that way. Cause I, I don't either. I would have talked about it either way on the air. But it's right. like, of, course. of all the guys there. Uh, you didn't want it to happen I twice. didn't want it to be with you there. You didn't <laughs> want it to happen twice. And there it was. <laughs> and, hey, we played Keep killing. We played our poker, and it worked out. It yeah, worked out fine. Fine. That was fine. And now, now you know, now you know well, your now, way around a fireplace. I am floor. never allowed. <laughs> I'm never allowed to do anything with a fire again. See, that's wrong. That's what you should be allowed. You should be allowed so you know what's going on. No, well, I don't want to now. Not until my fingers heal. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the burns I got on the end of my oh. fingers. <laughs> I got a bunch of blisters on the end of my fingers. Terrible. That got so hot so quick, yeah. and uh, but everybody everybody was fine. No one was killed. So that was the poker game. <laughs> and we <laughs> we said all the other stuff for the poker game before. Yeah. That's right, and everybody had a, a marvelous time. Yeah, we did. We yeah. did. Yeah. 
Buzz is a bad dealer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just funny. There's brother. that. We're just kidding about I know. that. You know, I mean, we're not, we're not and, kidding about it, but we're just kidding about and it. And you're right. I am a bad dealer. Mm -hmm. More All practice right. for me. We got pissed before when we brought that up, so don't, don't get pissed now. Well, you said something about the money. What about the money? Well, you said something about the money earlier when you brought it up. What did we bring up? What, the, what about the money? About the bad dealer, and then I won the, the pots at the end, the, the, the side bets at the end, remember? Yeah. And you, you said something earlier about the money, and I said I would give the money back. That's, that's what happened. <laughs> what? I, it's not important. Everything's no, fine. No, 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 really. Come on, I'm not busting your chops now. We said that you got the palsy. When you when you deal the cards, you're very, you're a very bad dealer of the cards. Right. We talked about that at the beginning of the show, and you're right. I, I agree with that. That's correct. I I am a poor dealer. Oh, I know. And then I said you should give us the money back that you won for, for slowing for down slowing the game. down the game. Right. And oh, said, that's that. Oh, that's it. he's absolutely right. I'm should. Should. happy to do that. You should give every nickel back. Every, I will. I will do that. Every. Right, we'll wait during the commercial break to get every dime. <laughs> no. <laughs> On, and Buzz, I win the award for being the angriest at you sitting to your right. Mm -hmm. I was sitting to your immediate. It right, and right. I was probably you know that was during that one and a half hour period of time that I was uh, losing and looking yes. for anyone to blame. <laughs> I which understand. is what you do when you lose. You I look understand for anyone too. to blame. But then I started winning, and life was good again. Let me just tell you how the speed of the game moved. Uh -huh. And really, generally, this is how it. Me, very quickly. Here's the order. Went. Here's how we're sitting around the table. Me, right. Rob, Johnny, Cakes, mm -hmm. Mike. Mm -hmm. Four of us. Like, bam, bam, I'm bam. in, I'm in, I'm in, Very I'm quick. in. Mm -hmm. Then you got to the speed bump, brothers, because yep. it was Buzz followed by Eric Bickle. Eric Bickle, who, who seriously, I have played golf with EB, and he is now, officially, I thought it was just on the golf course, he is officially the slowest man in the world. So we figured out what we have to do the next time we play cards. That's right. Put you on one side of the table right. mm -hmm. and Eric on the other side. Give you guys time and that, well, they'll, they'll still have to deal at a certain point, but give you guys time to process whatever you're processing with two cards in Texas. Hold them. Because <laughs> that was... Give you time to make the decision. <laughs> Eric would sit there and look at his card. Right. And everybody at the whole table would bet. Then it would come to Eric and he'd go, Yeah. Um... <sighs> Hold on. You me nuts. Look at his cards. What about when Eric started talking in his high voice? Oh, I'm getting lousy up in cards, too. <laughs> I'm a big loser. I'm a big loser. I'm paying for you to go to the movies tonight. I fold. I quit. I guess that's what everybody that plays cards with a regular group of people. You just got to deal with everybody else's style. Sure. Or lack thereof. <laughs> So we all have to deal with. That's 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 the way. It was. But the good thing is, people get better every time we play. Yeah. When we all first started, we were rookies too. Yeah. And I missed the first game, so I'm a game behind everybody else. Mm. That's what I tell myself. <laughs> okay, but yeah, <laughs> keep telling that to yourself. Well, it was a good game, and we next meet. Yeah. We next meet next month to next play month. a game. Next month, and uh, you don't always have to be the host, but if you like to, I think everybody likes coming over to your well, pad to do that. As long as I've lost my driver's license, <laughs> I kind of have to be the host, unless That's somebody me. wants to come pick me up. Okay, if that answers that question, we'll see you at your house next month. Be at my place. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Look at the way they admire and adore him. <laughs> That's it. If he can teach a class, he can teach a class. I mean, I can teach a class. What is your area of expertise? Well, I can tell the difference between butter, and I can't believe it's not butter. No, you can't, Mr. Simpson. No one can. Oh, I failed again. Everybody can teach a class but me. I'm an idiot. What am I going to tell my wife and kids? Oh, you're married? That depends. Is there another way to get this job? No, Mr. Simpson. What I mean is we may have a job for you after all. We need someone to teach a course on how to build a successful marriage. I'll do it. Anything to get me out of that house away from all that nagging and noise of a family of love. Sha la la la. The Don and Mike Show. A kind word need not cost much. With half a loaf of bread and an empty cup, I found myself two friends. Don and Mike. The Don and Mike Show. Hi, Don and Mike. Yeah. Did you ever get the Lancelot link in the Secret Chimps album I sent you? You know what? Yes, we did. I want to thank you for sending that in. Unfortunately, there was no singing on that. Isn't that right, Robbie? There was no singing on there? Well, there was singing, but it was just like bubblegum rock music. There was no dialogue or anything. And See? unfortunately, you have to have the dialogue. If you don't have the dialogue on the record, what's the good of it if you're not having any of the characters? That's right, Lancelot. <laughs> Remember Lancelot and Link is that TV show we loved when we were kids where they would dress monkeys up like people and they had them like go surfing and drive cars. 
bars and eat food and stuff? Here we are at the beach, Mata. I've got a big beach towel and an umbrella set up. You're my beach god, Lancelot. <laughs> yeah, so thanks for sending that. Uh, Rob, did you send that record back to this guy? I filed it. We might need it in the future, Tom. No, you might need it. You said you were going to send me some gifts, but I want to thank you for the for the years that, that I've been listening to you. I was crying just before I called you because I'm having a tough time in my life right now. But, hmm. oh, but really? you guys are the greatest. You really are. What's your tough time? Can you talk about it? Uh, yeah, I'm going through divorce, and I just uh, got fired. Mm. Oh, ouch. But I oh, what a lucky was. man <laughs> he, he was. was. You, you divorce her, or she divorce you? She dumped me for her psychologist, which is another... Oh, oh man, that's oh. the worst. Ouch. You know what, Dennis Murphy. Dennis Murphy no longer has the title of Biggest Loser on this show. Goodness sake. So she dumped you after, was she going to this guy during your marriage? And and I tell you, well, no, my wife is the executive director for the California Association of School Psychologists. And she came home after her uh, her March uh, annual convention, Uh and she was just a different woman. And then the next thing you know, our beautiful marriage and our beautiful home and my beautiful children, her life had been... Hmm. Years of hell, and I'm telling you the truth, guys, because the son of a bitch is probably listening to you right now. He lives in a suburb of Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm going to kick his ass. Oh, good for you. Some guy boning your wife. She's your property, man. If you want to know. Well, no, 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 we don't want to get into that. Oh, I'm sorry, but this is all true, and I'm going through horrible turmoil. And why'd you get fired? Uh, Can I tell you the truth? I put my arm around a very close friend of mine. And I gave her a big hug and all that stuff. And the next thing you know, I'd been called in the office because people had complained it was inappropriate touching, and they fired me for sexual harassment. Did the employee that you put your arm around complain about it? I don't know if she did or not because Mm. she's a close friend of mine, but (laughs) other employees put her up to it. But I'm just devastated. Mm. And I sure do want to believe you, but I have to wonder if there's another side to this because you sound like the... Sad sack loser is like your wife goes out of town, bones some other guy, no, and no, she leaves you in the no, lurch. You and the truth, guys. All you do is put your arm around the girl. Million people. I would not say this because there are many people out there will, that will probably recognize my voice. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Right after my divorce, mm-hmm. I was uh, putting my arms around you know, any woman I yeah. would see under well, any that's circumstances. That's not true. And I would always bring my right hand down uh, right near the breast. I've been uh, eight <laughs> months, and I haven't. I can't look at another woman. I can't touch another woman. <laughs> Oh, really? Oh, you're a mess. I didn't have that problem. It, it, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I love you guys, man. Well, you know, thanks. You're just a mess. Uh, that seems almost incomprehensible to me that you would simply put your arm around somebody yeah. and they well, would fire you. I mean, you could go get a lawyer and you could sue their ass. Yeah. No, you can't do that. It, this, this company has zero tolerance, and I admit it, I was wrong. If I did some inappropriate anything, I, I apologize to the site manager. Well, did you feel her breasticle? Oh, absolutely not. Did uh, he, ab- did he, she's got a lot of personal problems. She came to me and told me uh, things like, my, my husband is denying me. And I said, what do you mean? denying you and she said to me he's de- denied me sex and i said well i'd never throw you out of my hot tub yeah there you go you know it's stuff like that uh, see there's more to it than just you putting your arm around her right yeah, well i think she was put up to it but other people complained and they said well what we want for this guy is rob where's my cuckoo sound effects please that would be good <laughs> i'm just i'm just starting to draw a bead on you now the more you ramble with all these things that have happened to you go ahead please continue okay well i'm using paxil and it's 20 milligrams oh. But um, I'm feeling pretty good right now because I'm on the air with you guys, and I love you a lot. That's good if we can uh, be the bright spot in your day. Do you have any uh, jobs on the line? Well, I've registered with four temp agencies, and uh, I I haven't scored yet. You know, I'm not a spring chicken, but I am a very, very loyal husband and loyal father, and um, I have friends. They're they're over in Sonoma County in the Santa Rosa area. and uh, Okay. Man, what a drag. All right, well, hope things work out for you. Hey, thank you. I'll keep listening. Oh, thank you. I love you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Here you go. Jeez. I'm bummed. Well, that guy's a mess. There was a lot more than he was just telling us.
That old sexual harassment. Who's the guy? What was the big court case with sexual harassment where the guy worked for a... That was uh, Rob Spiewak, Mike. For a, <laughs> <laughs> was he talking about Seinfeld? Didn't he bring in something about Seinfeld? That was in Wisconsin, yeah. yeah. A beer brewery, one of the big ones. And then he sued, and he got his job back and back yeah. pay, right? And all he got all he got fired for, the, the sexual harassment in his case, was simply relating the plot of the Seinfeld episode. Seems to me that if you really put your arm around somebody and you got fired, you could... Sue. And don't you remember that that case? Spiewak versus Slaw? <laughs> oh, a big sexual harassment. Case yeah, was, here? Was, yeah, we didn't let that one get into the courts. They, uh, we handled that matter in house. Mm -hmm. Hello, Donna Mike Show. <laughs> hey, buddy. Speed Donna Mike? Wow. Hello. Donna Mike? Hi. Hey, what's up? Hi. I uh, just want to let you know um, one thing you should not use as a, a lubricant while pleasuring your own self is a uh, nair. The hair removal cream? <clears throat> Did yes. you do that by choice? Not like, no. I accidentally, I have. Huh. I grabbed for uh, what I thought was a lotion. It was dark, and I had a few beers. Uh, welcome uh, to the Unlucky in Love segment of the Donna Mike Show. Oh, man, you so you were you were a little loaded, and you uh, wanted to pleasure yourself, and you grabbed yeah. it. You, gra yeah. <laughs> you grabbed the <laughs> <laughs> And uh, my wife was on the rag, so. Just wondering, do you have a poodle? <laughs> a poodle? <laughs> but the thing is, I didn't lose any hair. But while I was, you know, right. lubing up, I started feeling this very intense heat oh. on, you know, and what you know, safe to say right now I have a scab. <laughs> oh, oh man, a scab. Oh, oh, oh my oh, god. The bird. Okay, oh, thank you. Man, right. just another example of how far some guys would go to explain herpes. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike Show. Are you talking to me now? Yes, ma'am. Hello. I was kind of upset that you hung up on that other other guy because I'm in the exact same situation. I wanted to make some some sort of revenge love connection. You you got fired for sexual harassment? <laughs> no, my my husband is I have just found out is having a wonderful time with a woman and we have two beautiful children and I am major victim in this and um I I felt for that guy even though he's probably cuckoo and he sounded like a nice person he said he wasn't a spring chicken so that concerns me. Well, he sounded like a nut to me. <laughs> I mean I I feel for you yeah. uh, that you know that your husband's banging somebody else. Yeah, me too. How old are your kids? I have a one and a half year old little girl and a four year old little boy. And my husband. <laughs> when did this? This has been an interesting show with phone calls. It's gone from the idiot brigade all the way, and now to the depression brigade. Well, uh, you can call call him a dick if you'd like to. He's probably listening on his way home. Don't mention his name, please. You can you can call him a dick if you want. Go ahead. He's a dick. <laughs> He's a dick. Did you discover this uh, in a dramatic way? Oh, I just I discovered this by he he had to go away to clear his head for a few days, and uh, I've heard that the girl's uh, father has season tickets to the Giants, and so he was gone just during that time. And I called his boss, and she filled me in. And um, hey, there's a nice boss, huh? Yeah. Uh, she was a nice boss to me. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. So uh, she's a woman, so uh -huh. so I have her on my side, I think. Huh. Well, you know, just let me say on behalf of your husband, who I don't know for sure is banging somebody else, you know. You don't really know, do you? Just if somebody told you. Oh, I called her. You call? Oh, you called? You called the whore? Yeah. Hmm. And uh, and she fessed up. Well, no, she of course. Well, my husband admitted it. He admitted it a couple days ago. But um, I found out that he is. She's now got a little love nest in the area. She's in New York, and we're in D.C. And she has a little love nest in D.C. now. So I found that out because really? I. Really? So, so he's got a place uh, where she shacks up down here. Exactly. Hmm. How do we get one of those places, Mike? <laughs> it would be we got to get us a love shack, don't we? <laughs> love shack. <laughs> Christ. So if you have any nice-looking, uh, my husband kind of looks like John Goodman, though, you were saying about John Goodman, which is kind of scary, and so I'm kind of shocked that he found somebody, but... Um... Well, that's, that's a drag. Well, is there any light at the end of the tunnel? I mean, can you... <laughs> you know, if you love your man, you got to fight for him. Well, I, I, I really wanted to go rent Fatal Attraction. Tonight and just to well, that end of the VCR. Let me just ask you a couple of a uh, couple of background questions. Do you, uh, when you were happy with him, when you thought you were happy, did you do everything for him? <laughs> um, no. Uh -huh. <laughs> so and that, that's so important, isn't it? Yes. It well, is. I mean, it was so. There was a was there some passion lacking uh, your yeah. relationship? Yes. Yeah. So I personally, I even told the, the bimbo that I don't blame her, which I think is very big on my part. You don't blame her, you don't blame him. I don't blame her, I blame him, Ugh. and I blame myself, sort of, which is so pathetic, because um, I, you know, I, I, I 
have, I'm tired, and uh -huh. I almost wanted to get Viagra. I don't know if it works for women. Yes, but, it does. Okay, well, maybe, maybe I'll try that with somebody yeah, else. But you know some in fairness to you, if he looks like John Goodman, he's all sloppy fat and everything, it's probably tough for you to get motivated, right? Yeah, that, I told him that, and that probably wasn't good for his self-esteem. <laughs> are you a good-looking woman or are you a pig? I, I am, I am uh, average. You're average. Are you, you... I've been told I look like um, Scully. You know? oh, okay. oh, Gillian Anderson? That's yeah. average. Well, yeah, so if you guys go out, like if you were to walk into a restaurant, people walking into the restaurant, people looking at you would say, hey, there's some kind of fat, fatso guy with a pretty good-looking woman. Would, they, would that be what they'd say? They would say, I'm a pretty good-looking woman who needs to lose about 20 pounds. No, that's not bad. Mm. Okay. Well, you know, I don't have a funny answer for this. You know? I know. It's not funny, but I, I was trying to make, when I called, I was trying to make a love connection. and, and for Well, and if you really would like to make a love connection, <laughs> once... Once you're sure that everything is over with the guy in your yeah. life, then, you know, you can call us back and we do a love connection for you. Okay. And, you know, you got the kids, too, which is cool. I mean, that's, that's, that's a great thing, isn't hey, it? Hey, does anybody, ask if anybody knows about any kind of, because uh, I really like to get revenge, and I've heard something called uh, uh, alienation of affection. No, listen, no, get honey, over it. Honey, listen. What? The next time you get a man, do everything for him. Yeah. And you know what? I did it last night. Because I thought we were going to be okay, and I did. Wait, wait, you did it. Wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold it, it. Hold, hold it. it. You, that you did it. You did it with your husband last night. I did everything last. Well, night. wait a minute. He's still in the house. He is. What the hell are you oh, calling us for? Oh, You're a mess. I'm pathetic. Buddy. I know it. Oh. You kick him the hell out of there. I know. I know. And what do you do? And now I'm Wait a minute, hold on. You, you just throw that in right at the end of the conversation. He calls up, you say, he's banging another woman. I say, well, how do you know that for sure? And you say, well, because I called him. And you say, but I don't blame her. And I told her I don't blame her. And then he confessed, and you and blame him. Right. And then you're having sex with him last night? I, I, you know, insecurity, I bet you there are lots of women that do that. No, yeah. I, I bet you're absolutely right about that. It's just kind of weird that, you know, the way it was sounding was that, that you'd already maybe thrown him out. I mm -hmm. kind of assumed that. No. Why did you do everything for him last night? Insecurity. That is the only reason. Well, you know, if you're in love, are you still in love with your husband? Yes. Well, then make the power trip. Then work it out with him. You know, you make put your, you know, you say, hey, her or me. You really make that, make yeah. him make that decision. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a little school mom. I'm a teacher, and he makes lots of money. And Wait, so so you know, you know, can I be honest? I feel like this is Dr. Laura. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I feel like you blew by that. You're really right, wait, 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 hold that. on a second. Uh, the other guy in the vacation called back. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Although, is this the guy that we just talked to? <laughs> it's me. I'm on medication. <laughs> hey, I am, too. I just got some. Wait, I, I want to take another one for this phone call. <laughs> oh, Christ. What? Late... I, I'm kidding. That's not very nice. <laughs> Um, I'm nervous. There's five million people listening to me. Well, you know, my husband's listening, so probably. So that's yes, uh, he I'll be honest. He's like a real jerk to me. He's a dick as I far know. as I'm concerned. You, you know, know, just listening uh, listening to the two of these, I think they sound like soulmates. Yeah. <laughs> two peas in a pod. Well, how old are you, dear? Uh, I was born in 1953. Oh, uh, okay. Well, that's... 13 years older than me. Wow. Oh, oh, my baby. Just oh. Yeah, but I can still run at 12,500. <laughs> what? I played rugby 20 years. My I husband. don't know whether to laugh or vomit. <laughs> my husband played rugby. Maybe you played against each other at one point. No, um, I played for Santa Rosa. Uh, so how, uh, what's your body look like? compatible? Mm -hmm. Jesus. Are yeah. you muscular? Am I muscular? Yeah. I'm a slim 175 pounds, and uh, I can press my own weight. <laughs> You can do what? I jog every morning. Yeah. Right, I don't so he's, smoke. He's physically fit. Uh, I like California Chardonnay. Yeah. And I love Don and Mike. I've been listening to them since '94. Yeah. I, I've been listening to them a long time, also. Um, well, I uh, I have relatives in California. <laughs> so when are you coming out? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't have any plans to. Oh but God. Perhaps I should take a, t a little bit of time off from my life and let my husband deal with my children on his own for a little bit and see how he likes that and well not a bad idea for this flat, lady then you could stay in my second bedroom i'm a very nice man well that's nice <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, this is interesting. You know, we're not doing anything, Don. We're just letting these people know. Are. Well, now, now, how long have you been on this medication? Um, since May. Because of the stress, or yeah, it's just been painful for me. Yeah. And I'm going to uh, go off it completely by the end of the year. It's okay. it's called Paxil. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And it's an antidepressant. It's nothing like. Smell buzz of pharmacy. Mm -hmm. I'm crying yeah. when you're sad. It's called Paxil. I, mine, mm -hmm. I don't know what it's called. It's oh. upstairs, but I uh, <laughs> it's just because I've been very nervous and having panic attacks, so I'm I'm trying to. 
So I had to, I, I had both the, sound nutty as a fruitcake to me. I think we got soulmates here. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I had the nightmares and all that stuff, but it's over now. <laughs> you get through that. And yeah, I have two beautiful little girls, blonde hair, oh. green eyes. My baby has blonde hair and green eyes too, my little girl. <laughs> I have a blonde hair, blue eye that is just a knockout, and I will never ever let her listen to Don and Mike until she's 35. So sad, Jesus. This is so sad. <laughs> All right, well, listen, i, I got to put your kids on hold, and if you want, you can exchange phone numbers or something or email addresses. I like. love it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, good luck. <laughs> All right, uh, hold on, hold on there, Mr. Good Medication. luck to both of you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. I love you. Okay, love you, too. I don't know if I love you, but I like listening. Well, that's, that's the Paxil talking. <laughs> you know, we oh, it isn't. No, it isn't. <laughs> okay. It is. Yes, it is. Sorry about that. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Uh, turn your radio down there. Okay. You take less pills, and you, the next time you get a man, do everything. I only use one pill a day, for goodness sake. Okay, that's uh, you're talking like a junkie now. Okay. I've had four today. <laughs> what? Four? I've had four today. Four. But four today. During the day, it was only half, because my students would start to wonder. Okay. Right. By the way, I do everything. Okay. I mean, ice, cream. <laughs> ice cream headache I'm getting right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Those two yeah. were soulmates. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, they're both crazy. I love it. They're both crazy. <laughs> yeah, good calls, though. Yeah. Thank you, kids. That was funny. We, we enjoyed it. Yeah. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Now, as you know, the San Diego Zoo is one of the finest zoos in the world, and we've had this young lady on the show very often the past, uh, I guess, seven or eight years. She's been appearing with About us. nine years. Hmm? About nine years. Right, yeah. Several plus several will be about nine. Use it seven or eight. No, I said, and no, I didn't say seven or eight. I said several. Then you said seven or eight, and I said oh, did I? nine. Nine, yeah. nine. Good, thank you. Yeah. Some of the animals, some of the animals you had as babies are now ten years old. That would be about right. Um, Remember the animals that did something funny on your tie? Yes. Those little lions, the little baby lions, were one year old. That's right. They are now treacherous and ferocious ten-year-old animals. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, Joan, uh, Joan Embry is here tonight. <laughs> and she's now 32. That's right. Uh, Joan is an, an animal a handler and a trainer. And uh, you, you, you really think you're fooling everybody, don't no, you? No, 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 no. Uh, and she I'm also... I'm here to do my best to help you. I know that. And she does her three horse shows a day. Did you know that? At the Animal Park. Boy. <laughs> what? What an exciting idea. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like an army cot or something? Maybe just to kind of catch up on a little, no, nap, no, no. little nappy poo? Just might no, no, snap no, you no. right out of it. Okay. I love Joan. I'm the only one who went down to see Joan. Doc has never seen her. You've never seen her. I went to the it's wild animal It's all right. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. But you're upsetting it's, me. You're no, upsetting no. Me. I don't want to upset you. I went down, Joan, and I I know you it. did. That's all right. It's fine. Don't say... No. What? I don't... I know her. I went down there. Oh, I know you did. I, I, I know you went down there. And I held a I baby gorilla. I couldn't go with you that week. You held a baby gorilla. Good. All right. And uh, let's get her out here quickly. Would you welcome Joan Embry? The Don and Mike Show. Doing an adequate job. Don and Mike. Today's Don and Mike Show is brought to you by Viramax Sexual Pleasure and Performance Enhancer. Doctor developed and clinically tested, Viramax works. Available at Rite Aid, GNC, and other select retailers. One triple eight. Try VMAX. Kim, what is he doing Mr. Over Broyhill, why are you staring at the map of the United States? I was curious. I, I noticed that as soon as you came in. It's not what you normally do. No, it's not. I was looking for a particular city in Texas. Why? Um, just I have some time coming up this the next two weeks where I'm going to be off. Are you going to Texas? Yeah, I'm going to Texas. No, you're not. Are you really? No. <laughs> What's why wrong were, with you? Why were you just staring at the map? Of Texas. You were looking at Texas. Yes, I was. I got a list from the network. of. Ladies and gentlemen, before you continue, Charlie, let me just to warn everyone here, this may be a little difficult to follow. I just thought I'd give everybody a little uh, preemptive strike there. Okay, go ahead. I got a list from the network of some stations and yeah. cities. Yeah. I saw one I didn't recognize. Thank you. And I was looking for that city on the map. 
Saturn Broyhill. Thank you, Saturn. <laughs> right oh. Right oh. <laughs> See you later. Thanks so much. And that was a wonderful uh, explanation. Thank you. Thank you, tortoise boy. <laughs> Grown up Cody Gifford. <laughs> there we go. I was He's just... still staring at the man. Get out of here. Look at the map during the commercials, Charlie. Come on out. You distract me. Now, Rob, you stop looking at the map, too. <laughs> Rob? <laughs> Rob? What's the city in Texas? What is the city? Yeah. Dallas. No. <laughs> Shut up. All right. Lean Gene. Yes. This is the guy that has been bugging us for 10 days to right. come on the show. We're positive he's a big load. <laughs> he's been on the Extreme Gong Show on the Game Show Network. Very exciting. And he's working on a comic monologue of songs that would annoy Bill Clinton. Oh, boy. Uh, you know, for my money, you just can't beat the Clinton humor. <laughs> <laughs> and cow's been milked. So we'll give him a couple seconds to see what he's all about. Like, the guy's been dying to get on the show. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, you knew we were you. calling. That's terrific. How'd you know it was us? Well, I have a call screener. You have a call screener? You mean caller ID? Uh, yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've Hello. got your number out here. You're, you guys are the only uh, people that um, I know in Virginia. Yes. Hello, Lean Gene. How do you pronounce your last name, sir? Slonimsky. Slonimsky. Lean Gene Slonimsky. And uh, tell us about your extensive resume on the Extreme Gong Show, please, sir. Uh, well, um, I used to be homeless, and really, I, that's a shocker. No, this Surprise. was in the eighties. Mm -hmm. This was in the eighties. In the go-go eighties, you were without a, a domicile. You might as well say that. Mm -hmm. And um, I did uh, what I did on the Mark and Brian show, part of. What? Uh, I did a, a brief monologue called The Lighter Side of Being Homeless. Uh-huh. Based on my own experiences. See, we don't like it when, when someone comes on our show and mentions another radio show. Yeah, that's a good way to tick us off right away. We've had kind of a rough day to start with. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. But, you know. I don't want to mess it up for you. Okay, Lean Jean. Well, go ahead. Um, but at any rate, um, I've also been on another time as a paid performer. I bet you were a big hit on their show, weren't you? Oh, they liked me. Mm -hmm. Of course they did. Yeah. They have you on more than once? I'm uh, probably going to go on in January. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no surprise. That's good. Well, I hope you enjoy that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love the staff. They're really great people to work with. So what are you working on now, Lean Jean? And why did you call us? Originally, I uh, needed help with a monologue. Is that all you needed help with? I have no, a question. Um, I have a question. You're not really... Lean Gene is a joke, right? You're probably really not lean. <laughs> right? I'm a big guy, yeah. All right, hold on. Let's uh, play a game to get some I weight. I could be the answer to the Redskins' problems if I were a little younger. Mm -hmm. That's right, and didn't have that terrible shaking problem. All right, let's play a game to guess Lean Jean's weight. And please don't tell us that we all guess. I'm going to guess... 400. Mike? I'm going to say 350. Robbie? I'm going to say 320. Buzz? I'll say 300. This is like the price is right. Mm -hmm. Lean right. Gene? The actual person closest to his weight without going over. Uh, Rob would be. Yeah! Ah. 320. 320? What, what's your current weight? I believe it's 330. 330. 330. Mm -hmm. And uh, how tall would you be, sir? 6'1. Six 6'1. One. Six Six one. One. So you're a big man all around. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. So, so how did you get our number? How did you um, come across well, our show? Um, I called the uh, guy who does radio for the Washington Post. Yeah. And told him I um, I had a monologue which I did last night. Uh huh. Um, a list of songs that President Clinton might find offensive. Where did you do that monologue in the tub? No, I did this monologue at a place called the Sacred Grounds uh -huh. in San Pedro. So who, who'd you call about us? Who Who is it that I can thank for giving you our number? Uh, you can thank uh, Frank um, Frank Ahams, I believe. That son of a bitch. You know, that guy never writes anything good about us in the Washington Post. Yet you call him, and we got to be the guys whose phone number he gives you. To. <laughs> okay. Oh, that guy's a son of a bitch. He really is. And we've never met him. Okay. And that's the first uh, that's ever written that we've never met that we've called the son of a bitch. That's good.
Well, he treats us just like all the other radio reporters for the post do. You know, even though there hasn't been anything really, you know, related to the show in there, you know, what you can tell already. We're not, I, I realize just for a moment how paranoid I might be sounding, and I'm going to stop. That's now. okay. I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm your paranoid buddy. Uh, 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 uh. Just you know, the crap post that I read. The post hates us. Hates us. Them. It'll never change. So you call the guy at the post. The post hates us. Why would they give us your number? Well, or why would they I, give you our number? Why, in what context did you call this guy at the post? What did you say to him? Who were you looking for? Well, I told him I was looking for the um, uh, wi local wise guys. I had uh, on the radio. Every city has one. Well, I think you've come to the right place. The local wise guys. Lean Gene, you've arrived. Welcome. Thank Welcome. You. We are we are here. The local wise guys. So, let us hear your comedy monologue. We've been dying to hear it. That you were working on of uh Bill Clinton. Okay, I'm I'm going to do uh, two of them. This is a list of songs that uh Well, why don't you do the first one and then maybe we'll decide if you do two of them. But do it just like you would if you were actually on stage in front of people. Okay. okay. Uh this is Bill Clinton's apology what he should have said. My fellow Americans, there are three things you should know. <laughs> Fooling around is an American tradition. Just like uh, baseball, hot dogs, and purse snatchings. This guy blows, man. Jesus. Lying is an American tradition. Mm. And sometimes I get horny. I went to Mrs. Clinton. No doubt this guy's been a big hit on the Mark and Brian show. <laughs> <laughs> guy Faber, Absolutely. And she screamed, You want me to do what? Mm. So I went to Monica Lewinsky. And she said, I am happy to do whatever it takes to help my country. This may be the first guy the crickets actually eat. <laughs> All right, keep going. We're loving this, Lean Jean. Very You're nice. You're darn right. I did it, and I'll do it again. And what that uh, new King Ridge character said Either. about Mrs. Clinton, uh, his mother-in-law, it's true. She is a, oh, can I say that on television? I guess not. Now, all right, listen, I'm going to stop you right there. Is this some kind of a practical joke? No. I'm very, is this the Washington Post idea of a practical joke? <laughs> is somebody uh, over there, they, they, the Washington Post really gave uh, gave you our number? Yes, sir. Oh, my God. What, I mean, like, they don't punish us enough by writing <laughs> bad stuff about us. Now, come on, this has got to be a joke, right? No, no. It, it, At this point, it, someone someone's going to come through the door now and say, Donna, Mike, listen. Here's our Christmas prank. Happy holidays. Here's your bonus check. We got you. <laughs> What's your other monologue? Okay, this is a list of songs that President Clinton might find offensive if played maliciously. Now, my, by maliciously, I mean like every half hour. All right, go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, the comedy stylings of Lean Gene. He's been slaying us with his great material. <laughs> go for it, Lean Gene. Some more great gags. Great A, funny man. Okay, you can't always get what you want. What's love got to do with it? Liar. Jesus. Lion eyes. You sexy thing. Midnight confessions. Ugh. Call me. Is that the end of the monologue? That uh, that was the seven songs I thought up. There's probably more than I right. didn't okay. think up. But... All right, now, very nice. Who are you planning on telling these jokes to, Lee and Gene? Well, I, I tell them before a live audience. Oh, my. Oh really? Oh, my God. Is that a good idea? No one's hurt you for that? Nobody's hurt me. Yeah, I mean, like, thrown something or anything like that? Oh, no, no. Hmm, really? What do you do, like, go to open mic nights or something like that? Oh, uh, from time to time. I also do book shows. Book shows? Book, book shows. shows. Oh, do people throw books at you? <laughs> no, no, they don't. Do you have a? You don't have a book, do you? Uh, no. No. And uh, do you have any other way of uh, of supporting yourself? Yes, I do extra work. You do extra work. There you go. Oh, you mean oh, out in California? Yeah. Out in California. Oh, okay. there. I think you got a long career as an extra. All right, well, listen, I'll give you my expert opinion, because I've been in the radio business 25 years, and I consider myself to be a pretty funny guy. Let me think about the material you gave me. Mm -hmm. Okay, are you ready? Mm hmm You blow. <laughs> you blow big time. You blow dead bear. Got to tweak it up a little bit, Gene. You're the Tw worst. Tweak it up like, uh, you know... <laughs> Significantly. You're the worst. Your material is no good. Your delivery is no good. 
but I have optimism for him as an extra. I think you'll have many days sitting on like a studio lot reading a book. You're awful. Has anyone ever told you that? No. We're the first? Oh, come on. Then people have been lying to you, man. Do pe tell me this. When you go out and tell these lame jokes, and when you go like on the other radio show that you mentioned, do they laugh? They're not patronizing you. They They're not patronizing you. They really laugh. Yes. And the material you just gave us is similar to what you did on the other show? The the material, now the, the list of uh, President Clinton's songs, mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, that's brand new, but the other monologue, I did at the Laugh Factory. Now, <laughs> oh, my God. The Laugh Factory. The Laugh Factory now. In front of a real audience. It's been recalled. real audience. Now, when you go on this other show, be honest with me. Now, are they laughing at you? Or are they laughing with you? They're laughing with me. They're laughing with you, and they're laughing at your material? That's correct, sir. Oh, my God! All right. Well, well, you know, you can't explain certain things in this world. <laughs> well, I stand by my first assessment. Always go with your gut instinct. Concern your next, you should be at the fart factory. <laughs> but that's positive criticism, because now there's nowhere to go but up. <laughs> okay, thank you for your opinion. And do us a favor. Call that guy at the Washington Post. Yeah. And call him every day like you've called us. Do you have his home number? No, I don't. Could we secure that for this guy, perhaps? Yes. That's good. Yes, we can get the home number. And perhaps you can call him over the holidays. And, uh, th you know, because you've enjoyed a good uh, chunk of time on our show. Is there any, anybody you'd like to say hello to while you have the opportunity? Well, uh, let me say hi to my cousin in Maryland. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. They still speak to you? Oh, yeah. Very good. All right, hold on a second. I got some feedback. I got a guy who heard you on that other show. Oh. Hold on a second. Hello, is this Stuart? Hello. All right, there's a guy calling us from California. Hey, Stuart. Yep. Hi. I heard this loser on that other show he talked about earlier. Yeah. And uh, coincidentally, they just pulled that other show from the market up here in Northern California. Yeah, okay. Well, come on. Get to the point, though. Well, they probably pulled it because they like that. They li they liked it. They kept him on all the time. All right, so Lean Jean's being square with us. He's telling us the truth. They yeah, he's been on their show. It. I think that says something about Lean Jean and also says something about Mark and Brian. Here, here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I bet it takes all kinds, Don. Tell me if I'm wrong. They were probably howling like hyenas at his material, right? Constantly. Sure. Constantly. There oh, because go. he's so goddamn funny. That's well, great. Well, I hope they have him back. I really hope they have him back. Yeah. yeah. Well, good luck, Lean Jean. Lean Jean, it's been... Uh, a little slice of heaven. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> really, I, not to belabor the belabor the point. But one last thing: you telling me we're the first people that's ever told you you suck? We're the yeah. first people that have ever told you that material's awful, your delivery is awful, you're pathetic, you suck, you stink, you're bad, you're not funny, your jokes are stale, your jokes are old, it's tired, it's a worn out subject, your, your delivery is awful. You're pathetic. You don't enunciate the words correctly. You, you breathe too heavily. You're annoying. No one's ever told you these things? No, sir. Well, today, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard a first. All right. But remember, something to work on. There you go. And that's what you should do during the holidays. Live your life to prove us wrong, Lean Jean. <laughs> and, hey, Lean Jean, mm -hmm. I've enjoyed the snappy comebacks during this, too. <laughs> All right. You've demonstrated your quick wit. Jeez. We'll catch your next appearance on the Mark and Brian Show. Be sure you tell that producer, Frank Murphy, that we said good booking. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the chap who's booked you, isn't he? Uh, yes, he did. Right, yeah. He's an astute judge of talent. He certainly is. And our best to Frank over at the Washington Post, too. The two Franks. <laughs> Both of them out to half us. And we've been uh, enjoying this opportunity to be frank with you. All right, now, goodbye. Goodbye, Gene. Bye, Gene. Adios. Adios. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Jeez. Is that guy the worst ever? Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, he's awful, man. I thought he'd defend himself a little bit, but he's sitting there silent. I thought it would be one of those campy, so bad it's good things. No. No, no it's just bad. No. Oh, I'm trying not to feel sorry for the guy. Oh, no, don't feel sorry no, for him. No. He's sitting there. You know, you're telling him that, and it's the truth, and all I hear on the other I'm waiting for, well, wait a minute. And, and all I hear on the other side is, 
I don't I don't doubt he kills on Mark and Brian. He's been rebooked on that show. I don't doubt that. Well, I just want my season pass to the Laugh Factory. Hello? Yeah, Mark and Brian suck. All right, well, thanks. We knew that already. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hello, how are you guys doing today? Hi, there. Hey, uh, have you guys heard that Larry Flint bought the uh, rights of the pictures to the Laura Flessinger and is going to publish them in uh, Hustler? Oh, good for him. He's always thinking that Larry Flint. He really is. He's always trying. People are dying to be entertained. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, buddies. Hey, buddy. Hey, I got an idea. Of course, I'm not an idea man. Uh, uh, Put out a double album of this guy and Dennis Murphy. You might sell a lot more stuff. So I want to tell you something. Sir. Compared to that guy, timing-wise, Dennis Murphy is Jerry Seinfeld compared to that guy. <laughs> He's amazing. I mean, I swear to God. I swear to God, Dennis Murphy is like the funny. Dennis Murphy is Chris Rock compared to Lean Gene, okay? Yeah. That is an embarrassment to Dennis Murphy to put him in that category. Pretty astounding. And, you know, even with that voice, you would think that would have carried him over. You know, no. you would have thought that, let me tell you the way. And I'm sitting there thinking, I, l I chuckled at the voice, but then right. the material weighted it down. <laughs> Call me. I can't get no satisfaction. The best comedian in town. All right, hello, Donna Mike Show. How are you hello, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. I, I got you know talking about bad comedians. You know, did you do you log much time with Drew Carey show on What's My Line or on uh, that thing that was on last night? Whose no. line is it anyway? And I'll, and I'll tell you why I don't watch that show because that's false advertising because they make it out like. The the comedians on there are very spontaneous, and they come up with these wacky bits in 23 right. minutes, and you think, God damn, those are funny comedians. Do you know that for each episode, they tape three hours worth of material, mm -hmm. and they take the best of three hours and, uh, and pack it into 23 minutes? So what you're seeing is not actually as spontaneous as it appears to be. And I don't think the show works uh, with Drew Carey. I, well, I like that uh, British guy better. I like the guy. The guy. The way they did it in Britain was just a lot better. It was a lot better. And that's the thing. I mean, it's funny because he sits there and laughs just like the audience. But, my God, I sit there and look at the last the last bit, and I, dr I dread it because he has to participate in that fat ass doesn't even know how to do anything com comedic, you know? Well, no, I would, I would disagree. It's comedic. And I, I think Drew Carey is very funny on his show. I, I just don't but like him in that, that role. One, no. The Drew Carey show is an excellent show, but you know, I, can't, I always watch that kind of cynically because I know that what yeah. I'm seeing is not, you know, the great thing about being spontaneous and doing a show that supposedly is live where you just have comedians coming out and, and doing it off the top of their heads, it's just that. Yeah, absolutely, and it works. It really does, and it's fun to watch. And if you know it's live and you know it's all happening, that's, uh, that's then the it makes it great. Factor. Yeah, sure. but, but, you know, it kind of takes well, something away when you know that they've done stuff for three hours and they got two and a half hours that suck, and what they've really got is 23 minutes that are funny. And they've got time to edit it down and you know, get the reaction shots, which they, they well, seem to sweeten it a little oh, bit. Oh, God. Sweet in the last but, anyway. but I think you should look forward to seeing Lean Gene on that show real soon. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Yeah, I just want to talk to Don and Mike. Yeah, you're on the air. Hi there. Hello. Uh, <laughs> was it just me, or did that guy sound like Groupie the Dog? Oh, you mean the guy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah right, a little you, bit. You, you, you sounded like Pussy Man. Pussy Man. Hey, <laughs> Pussy Man. Hello, I've got a list of songs that the president won't like. I hope he won't get mad at me. That's the worst. <laughs> sorry, we're out of time. again, Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice, and I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging.